That was insane. Okay, what the... F okay, that was wild. Did not know that that was coming up. That's insane that he just said that. That's crazy. I'm saying it. Heated Israel-Palestine debate with Bassem Youssef, who went on the Patrick Bed David podcast, one of my favorite. <laughs> He got value tained. Are you not value tained? Patrick Bud David and Adam Sosnick and Vincent Oshana are joined by comedian, television host, and surgeon Dr. Bassem Youssef. He's an Egyptian comedian known as the Egyptian John Stewart. Dr. Brainslug, thank you for the five get the subs. And they call me Stance, thank you for the five get the subs. Let's take a look at how this conversation took place because this is now, you know, uh, all over the place. Would you ever perform in his? People have been wanting to. Uh, People have been trying to get me to watch this for a time, for some time now. No. You would not? No. Why? They would accept you. <laughs> I don't accept them. <laughs> <laughs> you don't accept Israel, the state of Israel? No, I don't accept them taking care of me getting in. That's no problem. The problem is when you go in in Israel, it's not about going in Israel or not. It's that the fact that they really show you a terrible time. You go in. Yeah, this is like one of the major reasons why... I worry about uh, uh, going into the region as well. This is like a, a very common perspective shared by <laughs> Arabs is that Israel does a very, very uh, horrible job of uh, showing you appreciation for your tourism or your patronage. Um, Doom Chimo, Mos says, Moses C., and Franklin N, thank you for the five. Get the subs. Doomed Chimo, thank you for the five. Get the subs as well. All right. In the security, they treat you like shit. Really? Yeah. I mean, I've been invited by Palestinians a lot to go to there. And so, like, I would go to you, but like, I don't want. What do you mean? Not if you're on birthright, Lamau. Brother, yeah, at that point, you're not. You're not visiting Israel as an Arab. You're visiting Israel as a Jewish person. It's very different. Remember, this is not my designation. There are plenty of Arab Jews in Israel, but Israel considers them to be Jewish and not Arab. I want to deal with the border control of Israel. It's just they, because they humiliate you. They and that's because like, you're Arab or that's yeah, because... because they're but they have 20% of their population is Arab. They're not leaving. Yeah, but they're treating them like shit. Are you Arab? No, I am not Arab. I'm Turkish, but, you know, I am Muslim. and That's enough. Not, not according to them. I've seen them. I've met them. I met them too. I mean, they, they don't have, um, they, uh, like, you're talking about the 20% of Palestinians? I'm talking about the, the, the 20% of, of Israelis are Muslims, are Arabs. Yeah. If given a choice to move to any other Middle Eastern country, given the state of circumstances in the Middle East, they would choose 100 times out of 100 to stay in the democracy of Israel. I've That's so awesome. That's so great. Uh, source, I made it the fuck up. Two things that are really funny. This is, by the way, the same attitude about, like, America, too. It's like, given the opportunity, plenty of people would live in America instead of the countries that America bombs. And it's like, yeah, you know what, you know what would be better, though? If America wasn't bombing those other countries, and then people could just, like, live there on their own without America interfering in their affairs. I'm certain that plenty of people would much rather live in a circumstance where America is not bombing their countries, okay? It's also a ridiculous statement to make, especially when you have millions of Palestinians who willingly choose to live under the Israeli occupation despite the circumstances, despite Israel's best efforts to make them not want to live there. They personally still choose to live there because that is their ancestral land. They withstand the tremendous amount of, of oppression that they are subjected to, specifically in the West Bank. I don't know if you know this, but it is very difficult for Palestinians living in the West Bank to return back into the West Bank if they leave the West Bank. Why don't they leave? Have you, have you talked to them about their health care and their schools? Because they're, they're, they're about like 25 uh, Arab cities that they don't have hospitals or schools they have to take in gaza and the west bank no i'm talking about inside israel i'm talking about arabs with israeli passports fully fledged israeli citizens they don't have a single cinema they don't have a single hospital they don't have a single school in their cities and they have to go to the jewish states in order to go there there are many 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 daily <coughs> microaggressions against the arabs who live in israel 
having the Israeli passport. Mm-hmm. Even within the Israeli passport, Israeli community, you have slurs like "Arabi uh, Malukhlach," uh, which actually that's their N word. Mm-hmm. There, uh, I mean, I can go on and on and on. But about slurs the are going to be everywhere in America. Where yeah, it's, we're but, all equal. There's slurs. Yeah, Every- right, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. America, notoriously not racist country. Which, by the way, once again, America is also notoriously a racist country, right? However, having said that, and I stand by this statement that I've made time and time again, the conditions of Palestinians under the Israeli apartheid rule is far worse than the conditions of racism that black and brown people are subjected to in the United States of America. Just want to point that out for those of you who don't comprehend this, okay? And we talk about bettering the conditions of our fellow Americans that are marginalized, discriminated against by the violent, oppressive structures of our white supremacist criminal justice system, for example. The violent, oppressive constructs that we are subjected to under the auspices of capitalism. We talk about that all the time here. Something to remember. Every day I get called a dirty Jew. You think I'm crying? No, I bet like every day here, if you find someone who's like nigger, 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 that would yeah, be, you know, like, like, yeah. Basically 200 years of America. Exactly. But- that was insane. Okay, what the, f- okay, that was wild. Did not know that that was coming up. That's insane that he just said that. That's crazy. Bro, did he do a, wait, did he do a tactical N-word deployment to show that, to show that the word doesn't hurt him? Is that what it is? <laughs> He did a tactical N-word deployment to show his interlocutors that the word does not threaten him. (laughs) Didn't sound like it was his first time saying it that fast. The libs will love this guy for that. Yeah, that was insane. He didn't just drop it one time. He dropped it like a lot of times. It's probably because we are called sand N-words all the time. Yeah, dude, but you still said sand N-word. Notice how you said that? And same thing with me. I get called that too. I'm a lot paler than Basim is. And yet, I get called that all the time. I'm not going to say it. He machine gunned it. Yeah, he said it like he was the advisor to Richard Nixon and Ronald Reagan. You know what I mean? But like when you have like a one part of them is much more stronger mm-hmm. and actually control the other one. And all they do is like slurs because the Arabs cannot do slurs against the Jews. So why don't they leave? Well, some of them actually, they, because it is basically, it is between the sh- like a shock and a hard place. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they are, um, the, the whole idea about like Arabs living a wonderful life, they're living good life. The black delegation is choosing to overlook this because the other guys are more annoying. <laughs> uh, why did no one call him out? Are you kidding me? <laughs> because he's sitting across from right wing shitheads, dog. Why would they call him out? That'd be really funny if they did. They'd be like, wow, dude, only we get to say it racistly. You can't say it at all, as a matter of fact. Also, why did they not call him out? Because guess what, dude? That's valuetainment, okay? Are you not valuetained? <laughs> I'm going to keep saying that. Oh, Jesus. I love I love saying that. Are you not valuetained? Patrick, but David. Compared to other Arabic countries, which is a really low bar. And the fact right. that I like, can use like a low bar to sell, like, at least they're happy now. It's like, I'm living here because I don't know where else to go. I appreciate you saying that because the bar in many, many Middle East... Like, I appreciate you saying that. I love that you said the N-word. Eastern countries <laughs> is very low. I'm not coming here to defend any countries. In I know you're not. I, I, you know, I'm asking I'm, what I'm countries just, you would I'm, go on I'm tour. just saying that the security and the um, inqu- equality that Israel wants you to think that they have it between all of their Arabs, mm-hmm. it is not true. They have something called zoning uh, committees where you as an Arab coming in as, to get an auction, to get a house in a, in a Jewish town, you will not be allowed to take it. And it happened more and more and more ago. Uh, One thing to always consider for those, who, who, for those of you who are unfamiliar with this process, Many of the things, many of the things that Israel does, okay, in its daily maintenance of the apartheid regime are so brutal, so gruesome, and so openly, indefensibly racist that when someone describes them to you, at first, it is perfectly normal to go, hold on, is that real, okay? Especially because you probably never heard of these things before, 
because guess what? The American media never covers it, okay? So when you hear that, you go, what? No, this is the only democracy in the Middle East. What are you talking about? Okay. <sighs> Before, it happened in Nazarite elite. It happened in many cities that I actually talked about. The, uh, there was like an auction where they found that the, most of the people who are getting the, uh, the houses were Arabs and the city canceled the auctions. And they canceled the auction saying that we want to preserve the city of Tarshiha as uh, a Jewish, Zionist, secular country. So I don't know how Zionist, Zionist and, and secular and, and, uh, would get, and, and Zionist come in the same city. So. Mm -hmm. It's well, interesting too, we, what, what question you're asking, right? Because like I'll sit there and, and if you want to read this real quick, I'll sit there and I'll talk to my friends in California. And I'll say, hey, you know, California, this, 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 I hate California. I hate this. I hate that. I hate this. And he was like, oh, why don't you leave? God, I love Patrick Bet David. He does remind me of Jank a little bit. He's like, I think, I think he's, he's like, he's like reverse Jank. You know what I mean? He's like evil, evil Florida Jank. I can't leave California. Why can't you leave California? Well, because my family's here, my unit's here, my kids are here, my uncle, my aunt, my grandma, da 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 da. Okay, got it. But I hate it here. I wish I was living in Texas or I was living in Florida, whatever, okay. Some people here, I can't believe, you know, da da da. Okay, why don't you leave? Well, I can't, you know, this, this, that. We lived in Iran. We left, lived in Tehran for 10 years. And I mean, I went to school there till fifth grade. I read, write, Farsi, everything till I left. And I went to Germany, right? I lived in Germany for year and a half, and then we finally get here. Like, holy shit, we make it to America, right? It's like a dream. But the, the, the people that, the, it's not the people that can't leave that give the argument of why don't they leave. It's the people that can leave that choose to stay. Why do you choose to stay? Mm -hmm. Like, I'd love to have a room full of 50 people who are Arabs who can choose to leave Israel. Why are you not leaving? Make sense? Just to kind of get an idea. What would you say? Why are you not leaving? Right? If you have the ability to leave, you can go to a different place. Why, why don't you why, why do 2 million people in Gaza being bombed every single day for 100 days? Why don't they leave? Because that's their land. Right? So you can be living in a very shitty situation, but you will not leave because you know that you're not going to get back again. There is those people living in Gaza, 2.2 million people. They're living under subhuman conditions. They could leave. As a matter of fact, everybody pushing them to leave through sign out of and say, oh, no, we will not leave because this is our land. Sometimes you get connected to the land and it not, doesn't matter how bad. So to answer your question, why don't you leave? Because that's their land. Yeah, but I'm talking about the Arabs. Yeah, bro. There's like, okay, let's look something up. Okay, really quickly. Population of Ohio. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, the population of Ohio is 11.78 million. Okay. A question I ask myself all the time is, why the fuck do you live there? Okay, why? Why do you live in Ohio? And the answer is quite simple, as a matter of fact. For many people, it's, it's all I know. For many others, maybe uh, it's the economic hardship of moving away. Or maybe a lot of people like the attitude and the vibes of the Buckeye State. Okay, this is what has made Ohio the seventh most populous state in the nation. And you have... Far greater freedom of movement living in Ohio than you do in Gaza, okay? The goal isn't to evacuate Ohio. The goal should be to make sure that Ohio and everywhere else in the United States of America has decent material conditions. This is why I absolutely despise when people turn around and tell me, a person who chose to live in the United States of America, that if I don't like it, I should leave. And I hear this in, to, you know, in different degrees, right? Different, different seasonings. Sometimes people will say, you know, if you don't like it, leave, brother, you Muslim man terrorist. And other times I hear it from liberals who say, well, I hope you go and travel to uh, Gaza so you can be obliterated by uh, a Mark 84 rocket. Or I hope you go and travel to Yemen so you get obliterated by, yet again, a, well, this time a Mark 82 rocket. Now, notice how both of those rockets are American manufactured. It's very odd, something to consider. And the question, the point is, the point is, no, man, I'm an American citizen. I want to make America better. Like, that's my goal. 
Why are you sitting around and just saying that, no, 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 things, things are good the way that they are. Let's not improve them. And if you don't want to, if you don't like it, then just fucking leave is ridiculous. It's unpatriotic to say such things, okay? That's right. I want to make America great again, baby. Hell yeah. It's in Israel. But yeah, the, yeah. because they consider this still their land. Yeah, but the, there's so many different ways we can have this conversation. But everything for me comes down to socioeconomics, okay? To me, I'm always wondering, why is the Gaza, the Palestinian plight at the forefront of the news? All right now we're starting to see Yemen in the news. People don't realize for 10 years there have been a civil, civil war with the Houthi rebels, Saudis, Sunnis, Shiites, Iranian-backed militants killing each other. Never in the news. Syria, 10 years. Is he doing black on black violence for the Middle East? That's awesome. It's so funny because the parallel is perfect. Okay. He said, why doesn't anybody talk about black on black violence? Uh, and it is really, 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 really funny to make this comment, uh, like to, to, to say this because the exact same reasons, first of all, the exact same reasons why there's so much conflict in that region is identical to the reasons as to why there is, you know, violence that occurs and violent crimes that occur in places where there is a, uh, a, a above average black population. It is white supremacist conditions that have caused chaos and ripped through marginalized populations, leaving them underserved. Now, of course, the what about black on black violence argument is also obviously ridiculous because once again, the percentages for black on black violence is identical to the percentages on white on white violence. Now, what does that tell you? The only thing that tells you is that people kill those in their immediate proximity. And America is a very segregated nation still. There you go. Huh. Stop paying attention to this genocide. This is the same Hasbro talking point. Israel such a small country on the other side of the world. What's your obsession with the Jewish state? Exactly. It's always so funny to be like, to, to engage in this, like Israel is a small being country. Guys, Israel is a small being country. Please, please let them do a little bit of a genocide. It's fine. Tens and tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people murdered. We know what's going on in Iraq, what's going on in Afghanistan. This is not an anomaly in the Middle East. But in my opinion, humbly, with all due respect, what's going on in Gaza is the equivalent of BLM in the States. What do I mean? So, black on black crime, every single weekend in. not value chain he said i could be more racist just you wait motherfucker Woo! i love these kinds of arguments because it like genuinely shows to the to the people that watch just become a grifter dog you got that shit unlocked this is why i tell you i tell you i can be the goat okay i can be the best racist oh my lord oh my fucking god brother god people that say hassan is a grifter hassan is a grifter that's why i'm taking like deeply unpopular positions that i genuinely believe like seeing the humanity of of people that are uh, being bombed into oblivion understanding where they might be coming from oh my lord dude oh god i could be so good i could be so good to you conservative movement in america Oh my lord, and god damn, all of those people who fucking hate me would be such fans of mine too. <sighs> anyway. Baltimore and DC and Chicago, you name the city, there's black on black crime. Let one cop kill a black guy, George Floyd, national, international. Yeah, I love that he is, exactly, exactly. Because he's right wing, he doesn't understand that this comparison unironically does a pretty solid job of i think getting liberals to comprehend this because they at least understand to a certain degree white supremacy right if they are depending on like what level of liberal they are they might be just as racist too but this argument actually in my opinion ends up causing liberals to re re reconcile their positions like to recognize that i disagree i think you would ironically push them far left law just to spite you no 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 no, if there's one thing that the right loves, they love no matter how much 
somebody is a uh, very openly a grifter, they still fucking love anyone that champions their position. Yeah. It's too true. Matt Taibbi bragged that he makes more money now. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> Do you understand? Positioning Israel as the cop in this conversation and talking about why don't, uh, you know, why don't people uh, talk about black on black violence is actually a great way to get liberals to understand the situation immediately because it is a domestic policy issue that they kind of comprehend. National news in the Middle East, Yemen, Syria, Lebanon, you name it, Iraq every day. Muslims are killing other Muslims. A lot of it is Islamists, fundamentalists. There's no, there's no marches. There's no protests. But it's also not true. Okay, this narrative, once again, this narrative is ridiculous. And it's just pure racism. What do I mean by this? Let me tell you. The notion that black people don't care about black-on-black -black violence is one that only white people can champion. Or white supremacist black people like Candace Owens. The idea that there aren't local community organizing happening that seek to try and make the best of the awful circumstances they're dealing with in the United States of America is silly. Moms Against Violence, I believe, is, a, is one group. There are so many people in black communities in the United States of America that absolutely try to combat violence in their own neighborhoods. Nobody's protesting about black on black violence is a ridiculous notion. Just as claiming that nobody is protesting in the Middle East about violence that Muslims are engaging with one another is also ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Of course. I mean, there's the Arab Spring is one great example of this. Okay. The issue, however, is always not revolts or revolutions that are happening internally. The issue is an outside superpower meddling in the affairs that always ends up leaving the country that America is interfering in, in rubble, okay? The greatest example of this is Iraq. One of the most famous examples of this is Iraq and Afghanistan. Afghanistan is a civil war. USSR involvement comes in. It's devastating for the USSR. Taliban uh, inevitably take over. America comes in invades Afghanistan, 20 years of death and destruction. And what does America do? Pull out who's in charge? Taliban. With Iraq, America goes in, does a violent and brutal occupation, and the formerly nationalized oil industry of Iraq, of course, suspiciously finds itself in the hands of American oil uh, companies, okay? The oil and gas industry in the United States of America, and also Halliburton is sent in to fix the country that it destroyed, who is the former CEO of Halliburton, Dick Cheney. Don't think about that either. What happens after America's invasion of Iraq? ISIS happens. Do you understand? Every time America gets involved in other countries, specifically in the Middle East, they do it for personal gain and not even for the gain of like the average citizen in the United States of America. Because if you live in Missouri, you didn't see any of those fucking material gains. Okay. Maybe your oil prices. Sure. But overall, you didn't see like a genuine benefit. It far your your the consequences of that, the allocation of resources to continue enacting imperialist policy over there for our corporate profits, our corporate bottom lines, has actually been quite devastating for you because you don't have a decent infrastructure, you have no decent educational opportunities, you don't have a good job prospect, you don't have health care. You don't have any of these amenities that you're supposed to have living in the imperial core. You got nothing. Some of the super profits do trickle down living in the labor, uh, living, living in the imperial core, being a part of the labor aristocracy. That, put, that much is true. Liberals recognize that reality and especially uh, liberals who defend American imperialism recognize that reality and continue to vociferously defend American imperialism for that reality. Okay. That's the whole concept behind like, you know, you can't get 20 cent bananas unless you just keep doing destabilization. Sorry. Sucks to suck. That kind of thing. Problem is you don't get the bountiful treasures of American empire in the way that like other social democracies in Europe do. And part of that is because America is the most destabilizing force. So like they focus more so on death and destruction and maintaining the violent hegemonic superpower position that the United States has. So you don't even get the same kind of amenities. 
you don't get the same kind of amenities that like European social democracies have, which by the way, there's a, you know, there's a, there's a time frame there as well. There's a shelf life to that European social democracy that Europeans take for granted. So that kind of privatization is coming for you too. Neoliberalism is impossible to avoid. Unlike the top of the hour ad break, which of course is very possible to avoid by subscribing. Of course, for $5 or for free, you can avoid the top of the hour ad break. Europeans, you cannot avoid neoliberalism, but you can avoid the top of the hour ad break by getting gifted a sub as well. Here's a three minute ad break. Now, Americans are significantly wealthier than euros, even clipping the extremes. <coughs> okay, so here's the problem. <laughs> South Korea and Japan in rubble. Yeah, they're fucking so bad. Yeah, famously, South Korea and Japan, uh, other communist nations. Okay, the issue is we do not think about the cost of living. We do not adjust to the actual cost of living in these countries. We do not have an appropriate way of, of deciding. We do not have an appropriate way of deciding like what the living conditions are in these countries. We just think, oh, high taxes and also they don't get paid as much. You don't think about all the amenities that come along with living in a European country from public transit that uh, walkable cities, and, and uh, a better welfare structure, a better welfare state in general, healthcare, better public education, what that has, like what impact that has on the attitudes that people have, on the living conditions that people have, just the overall ease of life, better federal, federally mandated protections in the workplace. These are all things that, one, Americans can't even dream about, and two, they don't even know exists in Europe. We talk about a country where there's no federally mandated time off for, you know, having a child, no paternal leave, no federally mandated maternal leave, no days off, with the exception of, I guess, bank holidays, if you're lucky enough to be uh, in, a, in a role that allows you to take time off in that situation. But we do not adjust. We do not adjust for the living conditions. We do not adjust for life expectancy. We do not adjust for even metrics that are incredibly difficult to comprehend, like happiness, okay? I guess it's entirely dependent on your worldview, but I don't personally think anybody looks at the overall GDP and goes, that's right, baby, unless you're like a brain-broken neoliberal online or something. But nobody points to the stock market doing well to be like, well, I'm really happy because the stock market is doing well. Some people, I think delude themselves in the thinking that uh you know when the stock prices are better that they're doing better as well and you know because of our 401ks and and ways in which uh the the stock market losses are socialized the gains are still relatively privatized of course um people think that they have a stake in the fight <coughs> but you don't you don't rainy draws a lot thank you for the 10 gifted subs by the way and also thank you phil aesthetics for the five gifted subs I don't think you know many white American boomers well enough. Have you spoken to my parents? Yeah, I know, I know. People delude themselves, unless they're in the upper crust, unless they're in the top 10% of wealth, which does own 90% of the stocks, the stonks. And many people fall under that category. America has a shit ton of millionaires, okay? I'm gonna pee. Israel defends itself after October 7th, and I've seen you condemn Hamas for October 7th, but you've also sympathized with the Palestinians, as you should. But all of a sudden, that's the biggest story in the news. Why the distinguishment? Why can't Muslims say... There's a say difference between comparing conflicts, mm -hmm. civil war, and then allowing another country to bomb you from the sky every single day for 100 days. You cannot compare the both. And actually, your tone of voice, when you mm -hmm. say... Oh, there is like black and black, Arabs killing each other. In your undertone is saying, yeah, they don't deserve to live, so let's Israel. Live. Zero percent. This is exactly Zero what you're No, no, this is no, what you're saying. No, that's not what I said. No, no, this is what you're saying. I asked a question, there, yes, you're sir, reading you, into you, my you tone. Have, you have absolutely no sympathy for the Palestinian killing. Because that's not true. Don't, don't put words in my mouth. No, 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 seriously. I 100% have the, 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 sympathy. The, your, your, your entrance into this uh, yeah. conversation is extremely racist because you say, the, well, the Arabs have been killing each other. First of all, the Arabs that have been killing each other, these are called either proxy wars or civil wars. But you, this is different. Because A, the America is not standing behind Saudi Arabia voting every single uh, UN resolution, like, like Israel. Israel is killing Palestinians, and nobody can do anything for them in the UN or the Security Council.
right? You can talk about how Saudis are killing the Houthis or the Yemenis or how Iran, mm -hmm. but when they go to the Security Council, America doesn't use the vote, the veto. You know how many vetoes did America use since the inception of the Security Council? How many? Tell me. 88. How many of those were they used in order to protect Israel from a veto? Zero. 56. Oh. Ah, zero. The superpower okay, no. of the world over 50 years used more than 65% of its veto power to protect one, one country. You cannot compare both. So why do you think that is? Why is Israel so aligned with Israel? I'm sorry, why is U.S. so aligned with Israel over Gaza? Pacific? I don't know. I know. Just say what it is. What, what do you mean? Like, that question is only a trap if you're an anti-Semitic person, okay? You missed that he called him racist? Oh, he did? Israel, with Israel based, he knows, yeah, why is Israel only aligned with Israel? Yeah, it's a really simple answer. One that I've answered a million times over. Israel is an American state, and an important American state, not like a shitty one, okay? Not like uh, North Dakota, like a cool American state that America cares about. There's a lot of commerce. Okay, not one filled to the brim with motherfucking cow. Israel is an American state that is a unsinkable aircraft carrier with its own uh, tools of espionage that is smack dab in the middle of a resource rich region. This is precisely the reason why, precisely the reason why <clears throat> Joe Biden and others have said that if Israel didn't exist, we would make it. That's it. We would create it if Israel did not exist. We'd make a new one. I mean, there's like a million. Ask yourself. There's a million. There's a million. Why? So why? Why? why I, I no, want to no, know. Tell me. Because they're white like them? Are they allowed to be Who's white? Them? No, I don't like this. I don't like this argument. There's, see, this is where there is always. <clears throat> let me tell you something. This is why there is always a deviation between liberals, and Bassam is a bit of a liberal, and and uh, and and socialists and leftists of the uh, of of a different variety. Okay, when did Brandon say we'd create Israel? Wow, so many people are unfamiliar with this. That's crazy. The Jewish lobby and military interest? No, man, it's not the Jewish lobby. First of all, APAC is not the Jewish lobby. You are missing the forest for the trees. Okay, you're missing the forest for the trees. And, you know, teetering on what I would say, well, not even teetering on, if you're unfamiliar, I'm going to be as charitable as I possibly can, uh, what is anti-Semitic, okay? There are far more Christian Zionists in this country than there are Jewish Zionists in this country. The breakdown of Zionism versus anti-Zionism in this nation is almost identical to the breakdown of Zionism versus anti-Zionism demographically in every other subgroup in the country. You go down the, the age demographics and you realize that the closer you are to 18, the higher likelihood uh, there is, no matter what your background is, you could be Jewish, you could be Christian, you could be Muslim. If you are closer to Gen Z, if you're 18 years old, if you're under the age of 35, the likelihood that you are going to be more sympathetic to Palestinians increases dramatically, okay? It's important to recognize this. There are a shit ton more Christian Zionists. Then, beyond the Christian Zionists, the regular old Christian Zionists, Joe Biden is a Catholic Zionist, for example, there is also the evangelical Christian Zionism, which still, and that is the messianic, absolutely psychopathic, Armageddon focused Christian Zionism. It's the most militant, most cult like Christian Zionism in this country. It is responsible for the highest number of donations to the state of Israel, specifically to the West Bank expansion. Okay. So just remember that as well. Even those guys outnumber Jewish Zionists of the country 10 to 1. Okay. But if you were to ask me, <laughs> Biden is a stealthy evangelical. <laughs> Biden is literally openly Catholic. Yes. Biden is not a stealthy evangelical, but that is pretty funny. I get what you're saying. He does have some uh, evangelical ass uh, uh, perspectives from time to time. It is very hard not to be uh, Protestantified if you are especially in a position uh, in the WASP nationalist nation state of the United States of America. Did you see how your haters are seething about the Yemeni Timothy Chalamet interview? They are spreading memes about you interviewing a hot SS soldier and shit. Can I just say one funny thing about that? The irony is, you know who I would be interviewing in a time frame adjusted moment if we're going to go back to like World War II? I'd be interviewing the likes of Rosa Luxemburg and the same liberals in the United States of America would be talking about how she's actually a fucking terrorist. That 
would be an equivalent here. These guys are interviewing some other fucking Russian communist or some shit, okay? If we were to adjust it to uh, the, the events leading up to World War II, there are examples of who I would be interviewing, and it's not motherfucking Nazis, okay? Rosa died in 1919. Shut up. I know. I, 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 I said leading up to World War II. <clears throat> so, something to think about. We're also going to discuss the ironclad commitment, and this is, I'll say this Here you go. 5,000 times in my career, the ironclad commitment the United States has to Israel based on our principles, our ideas, our values. They're the same values. And uh, I, uh, I've often said, Mr. President, if there, uh, were, if there were not in Israel, we'd have to invent one. Um, and I it is the best three billion dollar investment we make. Were there not an Israel, the United States of America would have to invent an Israel to protect her interest in the region. The United States would have to go out and invent an Israel. There you go, for those of you who are wondering, um, those of you who are wondering like, what, uh, when did Biden say that? Well, there it is. Biden has said a lot worse stuff uh, than just that for the record, okay? <clears throat> Someone has to let him know the old hits don't bang no more, but he mourns a lot. So that counts for something. I'm just, this is important to understand that our interests in Israel are material. They are not immaterial. There's no spiritual reason to fucking support Israel. It's, it's, you know, there is a very real material reason for why the American government has this position. Well, I mean, here, this is another example. Reagan administration, actually, even though they were, you know, Reagan was an incredibly pro-Israel president, but they were concerned about the mounting civilian death toll. If you go back, is, at one point, Reagan even, even told the Israelis that it's starting to look like a holocaust. He used the term holocaust. So con contrast that with, you know, Biden today. But Biden at the time was a senator. So Menachem Begin comes to Washington and he gets grilled by all these American senators over the rising civilian death toll. And Begin then goes back to Israel. He talks to reporters and he tells reporters, but there was one senator who stood up. This is 1982. One senator who stood up and gave an impassioned defense of our invasion of Lebanon and said that if he was in the same position in the United States and he was dealing with an, you know, a threat like that, he also would support the killing of women and children. And Begin says, you know, that senator was a guy named Joe Biden. And I told, and Begin himself was a war criminal from 1948 in the Ergun militias, you know, as part yeah. of the original Nakba. So this. Yep. Does Germany have a material reason to stand on the side of Israel? Yes. Every country has a material interest on, uh, on, on why they side with Israel. Okay. Yeah. They're literally, they're, they're selling weapons now. Germany is now selling weapons to Israel. Okay. Where is this? Um, all right, let's continue. I mean, uh, a lot of Americans consider Who's Israel is the white. But you American. know for for a fact, I that know, I know. Most Israelis are it's, Sephardic and they're brown. It's the person. No. Oh shit. Iraq. No. <laughs> Would you ever? Where the fuck was I? Where? Oh shit. Compared to other Arab countries, which is a really low ball, they're living yeah, against stronger. Hundred mm -hmm. years old, they're slurs. Oh no! What, where was I? Where was I? Where was I? Where was I? Twenty-seven thirty-six. Is that where I was? Oh, did it actually? But they have twenty percent of their population is Arab. They're not leaving. Oh, okay. There it is. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, good. Wait, no, no, that's yeah, not true. I was on thirty-seven minutes. <laughs> the country that would kidnap <laughs> little kids from Yemeni Jews in nineteen fifty and then take them away and then tell their parents that they die. And they did that in order to instill um, uh, Semitic uh, DNA in their population. That's why, DNA, that, that's why DNA testing is not allowed in Israel. So are you uh, pro-Islam? Are you anti-Israel or both? Uh, I'm not, <laughs> what does that mean, pro-Islam? I'm not pro-anything. No, I'm, I'm pro-humanity, man. It so am I. It, it so am I. It, it doesn't matter my religion is. I don't care, actually, and I can give you a hundred things I can tell you about Islamic countries that they do wrong. So but say, what happens? What happens is right now, is that the people who are bombing people only every single day, they are not Yemenis, they're not Houthis, they're not Saudis, they're Israelis. For a hundred days, they have brought, they have dropped almost three 
nuclear weapons on an open air prison and all because of Hamas. Dude, if ISIS was already there, you have no excuse to kill 30,000 people. You can't say words like nuclear weapons when it's not true, boss. I mean, you know that. The, equivalent, say- the, equivalent, the equivalent of three. No, I can't. I can't. I can't. So now they're dropping nuclear weapons? That's said, what you're I trying to like sell that, me no, on I this like, one now? I said like they're dropping the equivalent mm-hmm. of three nuclear weapons. So there. how many people have died in Gaza? 30,000 people. Okay, according to... Um, Hamas, obviously UN gets their number from Hamas. So but you, over the do you, last, do you have a number that you trust? No, I don't have any number that I trust. But I'll take your word for it. I don't think that sounds. So how many? Uh, so how many? Why, so, so how many? Pe- hundreds of so thousands people, of Muslims how, how, have died how, how, in how many, the Middle East. How many people in Israel died in uh, October seventh? According to the numbers, twelve hundred. But according the, to who? But the numbers are still being counted. According to whom? According to the IDF. Oh, but I don't trust the IDF. I, whether you do or you don't, those are the numbers that we're working with. Well, I'm giving you 50,000 people died, and, my, you, and you said you don't trust them. So what? Let's continue. But where, I who said, do we trust? I, that's not what I said. I said according to Hamas. Yeah, but so like whether when, I believe the numbers. When you say according to Hamas, it, it's like it's the undertone no, that you, you don't you, believe the numbers. With, with, with all due respect, you're missing my point. Mm-hmm. 30,000, other than the Hamas fighters, because I will, I will stand to kill these people. I, I hope zero civilians die. But, but we know what happens. But they die. Of course. Every day. But 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 let's go back to my initial so, question. No, no, no. Let me ask this question, question and then you can you, stick to my... How, how do you think how many but what about should the hundred, die? Zero. Should we stop? Zero. But they're killing it. Okay, but that's not my point, Bassam. My point is this. 30, how, how many can I ask lost the question? limbs? Can I ask the question? Hmm. And then you can have the full, full response. Hmm. Why is this issue at the forefront of the news? When hundreds of thousands, since 9-11, 5 million plus people in the Middle East have died. 5 million. Mm. 5 million versus 30,000. Where, where are the marches? Where are the, where are the protests? But you haven't been around. But, no, you just haven't been around. No, but I also read the newspapers. Because, because I see what's going on. That's crazy, dude. Oh, I haven't seen the marches myself, so they must not exist. It's ridiculous. It's a ridiculous take. The idea that, like, Arabs are not consistently or the muslim world is not consistently up in fucking arms about uh the the sectarian conflict that oftentimes is of course backed by western powers is ridiculous it's like trying to have a conversation with a baby who lacks object permanence about whether or not i actually got your fucking nose okay i could tell the baby i didn't get your nose this is not your nose baby but the baby will be like, but in my heart of hearts, I believe you did get my nose, sir. Goo goo gaga, give me back my fucking nose. Where is my nose, I say as the baby. But that is the nature of debate with a reactionary. That's it. Especially in the United States of America. American exceptionalism, straight up, dictates that you have to literally talk to a stupid person who has the dumbest fucking opinions and simply on the virtue that they thought it and they are a unique and individual snowflake that you have to take it seriously his argument is not backed by any evidence whatsoever his argument is simply backed by well i didn't see it and i read the news okay got it going on because there has been marches there has been marches against what against what's happening in yemen there have been massive marches against what happened in iraq if you ask the average person difference they couldn't tell you that there's a war in yemen there is a difference but if you ask the average american they (laughs) what does this prove once again this is not an argument you went from arabs are not protesting this kind of thing to saying the average american doesn't know okay yeah that's deliberate that's by design they know what is exactly going on in Israel. Here's the, th- here's the thing. These uh, mental gymnastics where you want to divert people to other conflicts, these conflicts are proxy wars. These conflicts are civil war. Terrible, horrible civil war. There's been civil war happening in all kinds of Asian and African country. The only difference is, is that that is a foreign country invading another country, like exactly Russia invaded Ukraine, and then everybody is sitting there. All they ask is ceasefire because one of the people in that conflict is a country that has been uh, financed, given money by the U.S. It is considered as part of the free world because they are secular, because they are democratic, and they are committing war crimes every single day under the eyes of the United States, of the U.N. and the Security Council. And that is why it is different. Fair enough. So civil wars are totally okay. If it's a civil war, don't look at it. Those are people just doing their thing. Did I ever say that civil war is okay? No, but you basically equivalized. Let's have a civil war. Five million people die across the Middle East. Yeah, it is terrible. It's it's no big deal. Because usually the civil war is really supported by like two proxy people and they are 
are like killing each other and it's yes. terrible and they're trying to do it. At the same time, those people are not just like killing them. They're killing them, wanted to push them out openly saying that we are going to push the Palestinians into. Also, his argument basically reduces to, oh, well, other, well, you know, there's civil war in Arab nations, which means like Israel should get a little bit as well. Cutie said you made her therapist sad because you tease her for liking T Swifter. Wait, really? That makes me sad. This is a ridiculous way to approach any subject, by the way. Not the cutie uh, situation, obviously. That one, I, don't, I shouldn't have read that. That just like broke my train of thought pretty aggressively. Harder than the top of the hour ad break breaks my uh, commentary and the stream for those who are unsubscribed because they see a three minute, uh, three minutes worth of ad breaks instead. Now, of course, if you were to subscribe, then you wouldn't see that. Or, you know, maybe you could uh, get gifted a sub if you're lucky. Here's a three minute ad break now. So, lol, isn't that Israel's defense of the ICC? Serbia did genocide, but not convicted, so we can do... Yeah, for the ICJ, that was the defense, kind of. That was part of the defense. <sighs> A-cap for cutie, thank you for the five gifted. Felonius, thank you for the five gifted. <clears throat> so, Kaya is snoring loudly currently. Um, I forget what I was talking about. All of the, uh, all of the things that just happened... In the last, like, five minutes made me lose my train of thought. I think I was talking about uh, this guy's argument devolving into, well, other guys get to kill each other. Why can't Israel kill some of these guys, too? Which is silly. It's silly. Because you've moved away. You've, you've moved the conversation away from the main point of contention. Is it good for Israel to kill these people or not? I don't believe it's good. I don't believe even without Israel killing 30,000, close to 30,000 Palestinians over the course of 100 days. Uh, what Israel did in October 6, what Israel did in October 5, what Dis Israel did on um, October, uh, before October, in the daily maintenance of its apartheid regime was still violent and immoral because violence is a necessity for the maintenance of an apartheid regime, as we know from other apartheid regimes like South Africa. To the Sinai, basically that is my country, all right? You the have... only people shouting for the river to the sea are the Gazans. Well, yeah, Palestine will be free. Uh, you know what, so what does you, you a know, free you know, Palestine you know, you know, look like? You know what's the difference between regular oh. people in the street shouting from the river and the sea? Mm -hmm. These are regular people that are carrying flags in the street. You know what's happened on the other side? You have a government official like Bidzail, like the the uh, minister of finance, you have Bin Rafir, who is the minister of uh, national security. Both of them, by the way, were uh, arrested many times for acts of terrorism against their own country. Are you, but these are Israeli prime ministers. They are the, these the ministers. Not the prime ministers, ministers of certain. Yeah. The, so, do you mean to tell me that Yahya Sinwar, who's the head of Hamas, or uh, Mahmoud Abbas, who's the head of the PLO, they're not politically saying from the river to the sea? So if we're going to use so, that equivalent... So you, didn't, yeah. you didn't even finish making... Okay, me. go ahead. So first of all, you are comparing a militant group, a terrorist group, with a secular democratic country. This mm -hmm. secular... The from the river to the sea conversation is one that I've had a million times over. I'm sorry, but on the one hand, you're trying to justify Israel's real genocide. On the other hand, you're talking about words being genocidal, okay? It's mind-boggling to me how you can simultaneously defend very real ethnic cleansing that is happening in Gaza while also saying, you know what the real ethnic cleansing is? When people who are being ethnically cleansed and their supporters say that they dream one day of freedom, okay? That they yearn for freedom. That slogan is the real ethnic cleansing, of course. It's like, it's like someone beating the shit out of you, okay, and putting you in a coma and then complaining about how your hand hurt in the process. It blows my mind, <laughs> except much worse, okay? Literally much worse. Genuinely, genuinely frustrating. You are a liar. That analogy is too kind. I would just like to say thank you for your commentary and coverage. I'm enjoying your reaction to Bassam. Can we please watch him? Yeah, well, I already ran the ad break already. The democratic country that I'm telling you about, they have ministers coming up with the map of greater Israel behind of them, and they openly talk about them, which is, by the way, if you don't know, the greater Israel map is from the river to the Euphrates, including parts of Saudi Arabia, Jordan, and Lebanon and Syria and of course Palestine. So that is the official talk of the official ministers. So you want to you know, kind of ignore this 
and you go after random people in the streets with flags saying from the river to the sea, don't you see the comparisons a little bit? Well, off? it's not just random people. It is Hamas, who is the governing body of Gaza. Hamas? But, where, but the, the, Hamas the point of a democracy, what do you mean? Hamas, at the end of the day, they're a militant Gaza. group. They're a from the river to the sea predates Hamas by approximately 20 to 22 years as a slogan, okay? The Hamas charter written in 1980, or uh, Hamas developed, I guess, in the 80s, and then its original charter featured this slogan because it is the popular emancipatory slogan of Palestinian, okay? Them putting that slogan in their charter does not change the historical reality, okay? I mean, they also say free Palestine, right? And we personally understand that saying free Palestine, unless we are weird, psychotic, rabidly Islamophobic, racist people, we understand when someone says free Palestine that that is a valid demand. You don't go, well, Hamas says free Palestine. There is no other version of this where you look at in a situation where one side is the genocidal side and the other side are victims of said genocide, and you look at the oppressors in that and go, I am going to frame this on the boundaries of what the oppressor has set. Well, we do do that for everything, but reactionaries do that for everything. You, oftentimes, progressives are supposed to see through that kind of thing. They're supposed to make this assessment on the boundaries of who those who are enslaved and in chains are and what their slogans are and what their slogans actually mean. Unless you're an absolute dumbass, you would never look at a situation where someone says black lives matter and then the other side says, well, that's actually racist. Why not all lives matter? And go, you know what? I agree with the other side. This happened in America. There were plenty of liberals who were like, oh yeah, I don't know. I mean, all lives do matter. What's up with that? Oh, white lives do matter. Why can't we do that? And guess what happened? Guess what happened? People now understand it because those who support Black Lives Matter turned around and explained it to others and said, no, you don't understand. All lives do matter, but all lives don't matter until Black Lives Matter because Black lives are not seen as a part of all lives in this equation in the eyes of many. And in a similar vein, many activists of all different backgrounds have described the historical importance of saying from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. And yet, people simply don't listen. They go, la, 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 I can't hear you. I am still going to operate on what I believe it is. I'm going to falsely claim that you are saying anti-Semitic things. I'm going to falsely claim that you are being racist. I've made plenty of jokes about the issue already. Uh, including those who uh, others have made as well, like, you know, don't say from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. Say, uh, you know, that uh, all the occupied territories where Palestinians reside in, including the 5 million under Israeli occupation and also the 6 million that are refugees outside of Israel proper, will one day be able to live in a secular, uh, pluralistic, democratic country where they will have equal rights to the... the uh, Jewish Israeli population, right? Like that's that's not a slogan. Militant group. They're ISIS. You don't take them seriously. Militant group. Don't I'm take them seriously. I'm They're the about... leaders of Gaza. I'm, I'm I'm they about... were elected in 2006. And as your joke said, yeah, a 30 year. Uh... 2006 when, when nobody actually was alive by then. Like now, like people there. How many people were alive? 50% of Gaza yeah, was not alive. In so 2006. If, you, if you did an election right now, they're not going to be the ruler of Gaza. Yeah, but you didn't do an election. That's the point. Why is that? Why is that? Because basically they kicked out Fatah and the PLO and they're oh, running yeah. the West and, Bank. And, and, and Israel didn't put them under blockade and kicked the shit there, out of them. There, there is a, an argument to be made there. You think that I'm saying that Israel is completely innocent? Do you think I would say that the U.S. is completely no, I don't innocent? Think you say that they, we had a debacle in Iraq. We had a debacle in Afghanistan. Country, there's no perfect country. There's no, per, there's no innocent country. Listen, this is... <laughs> we had a debacle in Iraq and we had a debacle in Afghanistan. A debacle. Anyway, I do like that Bassam does a fairly decent job because, like, listen, any moment where you're on the on the back foot in a conversation like this is a moment where you've, like, legitimately conceded certain points. So that's good, okay? This is what you do. 
and I'm when I say what you do is what America and Israel and all of this like pro let's kill them all. No, you, no, no, no. You, you you've kill, already put words in my mouth. Kill, you've called you, me you, racist. You're saying that I, I want to kill I, everybody. I, I, no, you I've kill, said none you, of those words. You kill people and then you ask questions later. You kill people, you ask questions later. You, America, that, isn't America, that what Hamas America does? America did. Hamas is a terrorist group. You are comparing Hamas. You, you, every time you compare Hamas, I'm bringing you to, uh, Israel. And, and America, which are supposedly democratic countries. Hamas and ISIS and whatever, these people are not like an exa good examples, right? I agree. I agree with So when you tell me Hamas, all right. The moral equivalence between Hamas and Israel is a ridiculous one, okay? The Israeli government exists. Hamas would not exist if the Israeli occupation did not exist. It is a nationalist resistance group that is definitely Islamist, okay? Its inception is certainly Islamist fundamentalist. It no longer reflects, especially on its civil governance side, those same values. Obviously, there's a separation between the two, okay? Uh, <laughs> this guy says he's literally comparing Israel to terrorists. Like, brother, what I'm about to tell you is going to freak you out, okay? I'm actually not comparing Israel to Hamas. But if I were to make that comparison, simply judging by October 7, for example, and what percentage of the casualties were civilians, 800 out of the 1,200, versus the past 100 days of ethnic cleansing being done in Gaza, Hamas would be the lesser evil. Oh, you meant, oh, you meant the idiot show host. Okay, that's true. Objectively, 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 if you were to equivocate the two, well, notice I'm not yelling at this person, okay? Guys, bro just parried you? Yeah. Lee Patrick Long is one of us. Guys, I, a new year, new me. New year, new me. Reformed. Okay? I'm also Egyptian, and I wish Bassem wouldn't capitulate so hard. However, whenever Hamas comes up, no, he's he's speaking to an American audience. I like, I, I it, look, I think he's doing fine. Okay? He's doing fine. You don't want to get lost in the weeds. Okay? You don't want to get lost in the weeds. Obviously, there are certain things you mustn't say. Certain things that are just completely, completely idiotic. Like, any comparison between Hamas and ISIS is idiotic. And that's not a concession, okay? That's number one. Uh, any concession on from the river to the sea being, like, genocidal rhetoric, which he kind of did as well when he talked about, like, well, Israel does it too. And it's like, no, there is no comparison, okay? One party is the offending party. The other party is the victims, okay? The victims' calls for emancipation cannot be equivocated to the oppressor's calls for domination. Ridiculous. There's also literal laws surrounding this thing. When you, t when you talk about like international humanitarian law, there are laws around it, okay? There are laws around it. It is valid and just to resist a belligerent occupier under international law, okay? Correct. It is invalid, unjust, and illegal to be a belligerent occupier retaliating against those you are belligerently occupying. Doubly bad when you're also an apartheid regime. It's ridiculous. <sighs> Hamas is a violent, militant resistancy, okay? Their goal is to end the Israeli apartheid and the Israeli occupation. Not agreeing with their politics and not agreeing with their methods does not change that reality. And I say this as someone who has condemned October 7, for example. Okay, I say this as someone who separates what Hamas is doing currently, what the Al Qassam brigades are doing currently, in a defensive posture against the Israeli occupying force and its operations in Gaza versus the offensive posture. But having said that, having said that, anyone who tells you that October 7 caught everybody off guard and it was not expected, it has to be delusional. That's why. There are Israeli victims and family members of Israeli victims from October 7 currently suing the Nova uh, uh, Techno Rave. Okay, the organizer of the Nova Techno Rave, for example. That's why there are Israeli family members who demand investigations into October 7 right now. The notion that you can have a non costly, a cost free, violent, brutal, dehumanizing, humiliating occupation upon 5 million Palestinians, half of which are in the West Bank and the other half in the Gaza Strip. 
is ridiculous. This is why I said directly on October 7 that a resistance to apartheid and an occupation is sometimes going to be ugly, okay? There are going to be condemnable actions. The notion that it is unexpected is ridiculous, okay? And that actually comes from the fact that under Zionist racial agitative propaganda, the dehumanization of Palestinians was so perfect that many in the Israeli security apparatus believed their own lies, the criminal negligence, the assumption that you can continue putting additional stress upon the West Bank, the idea that Palestinians under the blockade in Gaza have absolutely no way of even dreaming of a violent retaliation against Israel. This stems from a supremacist attitude, thinking that you legitimately have so perfectly dominated, humiliated, and subjugated this population that they will remain like the docile caged animals they are. But one day, they break through that cage. Okay? That's it. Right, fine. Hamas, horrible people. Let's talk about the leaders of the, of the free world. America, they kill first, they ask questions later. And the result, Afghanistan and Iraq. Israel, Disasters. They kill I'm not going to argue with Israel, them on that one. Disaster. Israel. Why? If you think that that's a disaster, then why do you not have that same energy for 75 years of aggression? Always against the last war, but never against the current one. Always for the last civil rights movement, but always against the current, current one. Odd makes you think. Well, kill later, and then the result, what's happening in Gaza, and what's been happening to Gaza, is there is no justification for Israel to kill 30,000 people right now. And all the thing about October 7th, many of them, who are, can you tell me where are the decapitated babies? What are their names? Can you get me the names? You want me, can, to, go, can, you want me to go over every dead, decapitated Israeli baby's I, I, name? I think that's... No, he's asking that question because it's misinformation, a falsehood that Israel ran with, and a falsehood that Western media repeated without any sort of clarity whatsoever. Journalists have parsed through the actual victims and looked at very public records of those, okay? Even one dead child is, of course, a, a horrifying disaster, okay? It's an atrocity. It's true. And there is a dead child. There was a 10-month-old uh, that died, was killed by Palestinian militancy, as far as we understand it, and she died in her mother's arms. That is a devastating tragedy. That is an act of terror, okay? 100%. 100%. And that hurts my soul to think about, just as the 12,000 children that have been ruthlessly slaughtered by the Israeli occupying force is an act of genocide. There's genocidal intent and there's genocidal act there for all to see. All you need to do is open up your fucking eyes and take a look. There were no babies thrown in ovens. That was also immediately discredited. Okay. No 40 babies that were decapitated. But that didn't stop Biden from repeating it. That didn't stop Ben Shapiro from repeating it and defending it. The story was refuted, wasn't it? It was, was refuted it was many fake. times. It wasn't really. And it was the biggest story. What, what's then? your point? That Hamas didn't kill babies? They I didn't, didn't say, kill women? I say if you have There's hundreds of people kidnapped by Hamas. What's your point? No, no, no. They're kidnapped, yes. If I, that you're if, saying that 1,200 people weren't if murdered? If a terrorist group would decapitate people, if terrorist group would burn people, you know what terrorist groups does? They terrorize. They will show them off. Like ISIS, they were burning people in cages. All right? We will not find about the atrocities of rape or about decapitating from other sources because a terrorist group, by design, terrorizes. They would go in with their GoPro. They it's actually low-key not a bad argument. I, I, I've never even thought about it from that framework. I talk about that from the perspective of like the hostages and why it is obviously the rational choice to treat the hostages well. Like that's why the Al-Qassam Brigade and you know the Islamic Jihad uh, groups and all the other Palestinian uh, militancies um, will, um, will, will do their very best to at least protect or offer some level of like security to the hostages. <clears throat> however, however, I will say this. The counter to that is also very effective because they did. Part of the reason why it is a part of the reason why uh, October 7 can be considered an act of terror is because they did. Palestinian militancy did very much 
strapped GoPro cameras on their heads and ran around and shot civilians. That much is true. That is also another function of terrorism. Okay, obviously the much larger terrorists in this story, both by motivation and also by pure death and destruction, is the Israeli occupying force. Okay, how come you didn't get banned for simping for terrorists? Brother, I do not simp for the state of Israel, and I certainly do not simp for American imperialism either. Okay, don't come in here with that kind of nonsense. Don't do it. No, that's a good argument against the whole atrocity propaganda that Israel has run. The atrocity propaganda that Israel has run to justify, to justify the actions that it took immediately after October 7, and they recycle it over and over again. Okay, the reasons as to why they do that is obviously, as you know, to say, look, like the Palestinians deserve what's coming for them and the Palestinians deserve what came for them. Right now, having said that, there are plenty of things that those GoPro cameras did not show plenty of things. Now, that could be a consequence of the fact that once that border wall was broken, once that border wall was broken, there were also criminal elements that also seeped into Israel proper, okay? And therefore, they might have been responsible for some of the other atrocities, okay? That much is 100%. That is 100% something that could have happened, okay? Could have. Point is, you have to investigate. You have to. You have to investigate with an outside investigator that looks into sexual violence in conflict like the UN special investigator that went into Israel recently and was met with backlash and criticism and accusations of anti-Semitism. The victims deserve the truth. You cannot stand against active investigation and simply demand that things are the way you say they are. I'm inclined because of the probability of sexual violence occurring in all matter of militancy and in all matter of violent uh, uh, instances of war. Statistically, there is a probability that sexual violence occurred on October 7. I've said this since day one. Okay. I know that a lot of people get very mad at that and go, what do you mean? Oh, Muslims would never do that. Or, or maybe more reasonable takes like, uh, who had time to do such a thing when, you know, your, your goal is to go in and out and, and, <clears throat> and you're literally trying to fight a superior military force in that time frame. It's not going to happen. Right. However, it does not matter. What matters is that there needs to be an investigation. Obviously some of the most erroneous, exaggerated claims of like systematic gang rape, that kind of stuff uh, is, is not confirmed. And it still deserves an investigation, okay? It's that it's claimed that rape was ordered from the highest levels of Hamas. That part matters. Yeah, no, that I don't think is... This is why I want an investigation. We don't even know what the Hamas soldiers were commanded to do. No, I don't believe that. No, that that comes from the classic uh, Israeli negotiation... Or not negotiations. The, the classic Israeli... Uh, 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 what is it called? When they... I mean, they fucking torture people that they arrest. And then, uh, and then they put a camera on them and they're like yeah go ahead uh, tell us what you wanted to do and then they'll say oh i wanted to rape uh, every israeli and also i'm just like hamas that is uh, a interrogation that i've seen those uh, footages as well yeah it's a forced confession it's not uh usable in court it's completely ridiculous and i mean the israeli government also uses it not to like dupe people even into believing uh, anything. They they usually just use it. Um, yeah, it was a co it's usually it's coerced confessions, but they use it to to humiliate. Like the Israeli government and the Israeli journalists that I read at least understand it as like a different uh, understand it as a different for a different purpose. Um, the coerced confessions aren't to to uh, you know neatly wrap up a narrative that this is like a real thing that's going on, but instead to uh, humiliate uh, Hamas and try to separate Hamas from the rest of uh, the Palestinian population. That's like their actual goal. That's why they will oftentimes name commanders by name when talking about who gave what order. Uh, it is very specific. That's the, uh, that's the overall goal. 
They will show you the babies that they decapitated. They will not gonna hire others like, oh my, we didn't do it. Because terrorist groups does that, right? This remember ISIS when they were burning people in cages? Yeah. They like to, to promote people. their terror because the terrorist group wanted to write to terrorize the public. We have not seen anything of that. That's we one have, of the most naive comments I've ever heard. We've seen videos, countless videos, of them gang raping women and then blowing their head off while they chop off one of their breasts. We've seen these videos. No, you They've haven't seen it. Well, are you fucking you crazy? Of course we've seen this you video. Seen it. We've seen, we've about seen it. dead bodies littered you have read all over it. kibbutzes. You have read about okay. it. Okay. And I can go show, watch the video. And I can uh, you're and, choosing this is selective uh, ignorance. Uh, this is selective ignorance. That's like me saying if that's like me saying, of course Israel's not bombing indiscriminately. No, they have. And I'm at least willing to own that. And I'm not Israeli, I'm American. By the way, I'm not defending okay. Hamas. They did But you are equivalent. But what I'm saying, what I'm saying, what I'm saying is all of these like decapitating babies, that is wrong. That never happened. Okay, it was only a few. A few? How many? I, dude, I'm what not the, there on the what ground. Are so what's we, your argument? We have, we have pictures what, uh, of Let's every, be clear here. We have what's your argument? That they didn't decapitate no, didn't one baby's I, head? I, no, no. I, so what are you saying? I said that what the Hamas did was terrible, but it was inflated by things to make it emotional to think that it's okay to kill okay. all of those people. Uh, it was inflated. So it wasn't yeah. 1,200? Well, how much was it? I don't know. Okay. So, so, so Israelis' numbers are inflated, 1,200, but the 30,000 from Hamas is not inflated? You're talking out of both sides of your mouth. As a matter of fact, according to Israel, Israeli survivors, they said that many of these casualties happened because Israeli um, um, troops came in and indiscriminately killed everybody. Yeah, he uh, he said that we have video evidence of like many women being gang raped and having their heads blown off. And that's completely that's a lie. Uh, there is no video evidence of it. Owen Jones actually went and watched the October 7 video footage that Israel has. There was not a singular instance of sexual violence in that video, for the record. Uh, there's also no video evidence uh, whatsoever. There's been no report of a video evidence at all from every outlet that has actually covered, every single outlet that has covered the accusations of sexual violence occurring on October 7th. Not a single one of them have mentioned that there is video evidence. Now, there is... Of course, there were videos on Telegram of, of atrocities, right? Shani Luke? No, there, there is no, there is, that's, what are you talking about? That's not video evidence of rape. That's a gross and disgusting uh, uh, act against a, a woman who was murdered ruthlessly and then paraded around, if that's what you're talking about. But as of this morning... As of this morning, uh, there is, at least to my knowledge, there was no evidence of that. What about the girl with blood on her pants? That's a great question. Uh, this was immediately addressed day one. Uh, that is, that could be a multitude of different things. Sitting on uh, literally blood, having her hands bleed, and then sitting on her hands. Like there's a, that's not video evidence. This person is literally, listen, I'm sorry. I'm going to be as charitable as possible. You've been following since 2019. This person straight up said, like, there is cartel-style footage of and decapitations happening after games. That's not the same as what you're talking about, okay? Sitting on blood is a pretty long reach, really? That's a long reach? It's a, it's a better... That's a long reach for you? It's a war zone. It's a massacre. Tell them off they're baiting you? I think so, too. Anyway, once again, the conversation shifted... The conversation shifted to, why is this person's pants bloody? It shifted away to, why is this person's pants bloody? From, there's video footage of gang rape and decapitations and, you know, people's heads being blown off. Okay? There is no, no such video exists. Videos of such gruesome violence does exist and certainly were circulated online in telegram groups except they were not from october 7 okay this is uh, reddit debate lord hamas killed families the innocent people let's stop debating how and when and what torture technique they actually used yeah i i agree i said this time and time again for the record that like i think it's silly to have these conversations but i will of course push back on misinformation right um that's the reason why i just mentioned this because the person said like there's video footage of this and and I am not a person that, like, thinks that, uh, uh, you know, this is 100% a lie or anything like that. I'm very uh, understanding and open-minded, obviously, 
uh, I think that, you know, there is a likelihood that uh, these things definitely could have happened. He said, we've all seen the videos, though, and he's talking about cartel footage or the very popularly circulated uh, footage of a Kurdish woman from 2002 or, or not 2002, 2022, as a matter of fact, I think of like uh, the, the rape situation and, and then being killed. <clears throat> now, even if all the worst atrocity propaganda that uh, Israel brought forward without any evidence was true, that still does not justify, in my eyes, the occupation and the apartheid regime i just want you to understand that as well this does not change the dynamic of an apartheid state being immoral october 7th did not change the dynamic in my mind at all about whether or not an apartheid is is appropriate whether or not ethnic cleansing of palestinians is appropriate it did not because as i've said time and time again the colonial power sets the standard for violence okay that's it but including the hostages that's the first time i've heard that story I've been first time because you are not covering yeah. because right. you have not listening no. to the survivors from the israelis on the every Seventh morning Seventh. i read credible sources wall street journal fox news fox news bloomberg <laughs> okay so who are, wh what are you reading hamas.com like where are you getting your sources <laughs> hearts yeah uh, belittling belittling him and immediately being like oh where are you getting your source from? Hamas.com. So stupid. Okay. Haaretz. Yeah. The, the Israeli the, newspaper. The of Israel. Yes, of course. Yeah. I read those too. They have actually brought I've people. never heard them say one time that 1,200 people were not murdered. I didn't not in that. one paper. No, no, no. I didn't say that. Okay. I said many of those numbers that were killed, they were killed because of the indiscriminating interference by the Israeli troops. And many of them died because of... Four people were killed that way no. when they tried to, to rescue the hostages. No, that did the that <laughs> Yeah, the only people that were indiscriminately killed were actually the Israelis. Yeah, that's cool, man. Yeah, you're definitely not you're definitely not showing your your perspective at all. That's awesome. That, <laughs> the only people that were indiscriminately killed were four people who just happened to be the who happened to be the the Israeli hostages that IDF directly shot. As these guys were like retreating and and telling the IDF that they were actually Israeli and to not shoot. The fact that you're trying to yeah, equivocate twelve hundred people. You're late in the game. Basser, you're late it, in the game. There was a woman that was named Dalia. She came out on the on an Israeli podcast and she said that everybody in the kibbutz were died. And then we went out and we say that uh, the Israeli tank, the one that fired on the whole the kibbutz. This is bullshit stories. All right. You think the IDF is just coming in and then just spraying down kibbutzes? That's like saying American troops are just coming into a conflict here it's called and the, just spraying it's down called, fellow Americans. It's called the Hannibal. It's, bullshit. it's called the Hannibal Protocol. Look it up. Yeah, uh, we'll look uh, it up. But uh, I think that's bullshit. But I want to ask you a question. So going going to that day, uh, all the stuff that we found out since that day, um, we, what, we found out Rob that uh, they knew apparently they had information intelligence for a year that it was going to happen. The day that it happened, apparently all the. I love these guys, man. This okay. I am I am valuetained. Okay, I don't blame him for not believing it. Let's be honest; it sounds insane, but they actually did it, Lamau. I, dude, they're all, they all dress like, like they're going to high school prom. Okay, the black tie on the skin tight silk black button up shirt is so fire. Okay, the only thing missing from this is like a teal vest. Like, if he had a teal vest that he was wearing with no jacket, by the way, he would be perfect, okay? They got the lion stickers on their fucking Fiji water to cover the, the non-sponsored water brand. They all have, they all have incredibly ill-fitting, like, skin-tight uh, button-up shirts. They all got the, the fucking TRT vein popping, okay, as they're talking, like, insanely high blood pressure, it's so perfect. I love these people. I love this podcast. They are incredible. Wow. The fences were down. Hamas got to run rampant for six hours. Uh, mayhem. They asked John Kirby went up and one of the reporters from Fox asked, how did you guys not see this with all the intelligence? And he said, and I quote, now is not the time. 
since October, it's not what three months. October, November, December. Wait, this guy. We're is... in January right now. They still don't know. Um, we f saw this thing called the Jericho Wall, where is this guy's awesome. Wait, what's what's happening? Why is he real? A leaked document where Israel already had a plan of what to do with all these uh, uh, all the displaced people. They want to. I still love them. I mean, it doesn't matter. Even though he's criticizing Israel, I still love him. Okay, as you guys know, I am uh, Israel's greatest defender. And it angers me that he is seemingly criticizing Israel. But, but having said that, I still love his look. I want to send them all uh, to Egypt and all the countries and, and the United States. Uh, Bibi Netanyahu was on a video saying how he could do whatever he wants in Gaza because Americans are gullible and he could do whatever on the, on the home video. Basel, what, what do you, do you have an opinion on the knowledge, the pre-knowledge of this was going to happen and the fact that they got to wait, they got to do whatever they want for six hours with one of the sickest military, sickest intelligence. Do you think like they knew, they let it happen? What, what's the, how do you feel about? I, I don't, I'm no military exp expert at all, but like f watching this, the fact. For the record, whenever I see like right wingers criticize Israel, I do get a little worried. Okay. You know why. I'm not saying this guy is. But when I do see a guy who's like otherwise, you know, talking about how value-tained he is all the time, I don't know what his framework is. I don't know anything about the guy. I'm telling you right now, I don't know anything about that guy at all. He was kind of spitting there, but I don't know what other kinds of spit comes out of that mouth. Okay? You said sick like 20 times to the kid yesterday? What do you mean? Please tell me you're not comparing like an American podcaster to a 19-year-old who was born into genocide. I, I, I hope you're not like the collection of the, the collection of like world experiences. I'm joking. Come on. Oh, thank God. I was going to say like, Jesus Christ, dude. Cause like the reality is that, that uh, kid I talked to, he might be anti-Semitic too. I mean, he said that he does not care what anyone's background is as long as they are, uh, as long as they are uh, pro Palestine, but it still doesn't matter. I mean, I was I was prodding a little bit. I wanted to see what he had to say about uh, uh, Jewish people. That they've been doing this for six hours, and this is the most guarded border ever. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can't even you can't even have a dog pass by by without being shot. And this these walls has been tried and 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 tested, and the fact that they gain and they continue. Like it, the 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 wall by itself is seven meters up, seven meters down the ground. It's one of the most fortified borders ever. And then you go in, the Apaches didn't even appear until after six hours. That's that doesn't and, make and sense. And you understand like how Israel and Gaza and all of these these are like very small. Mm -hmm. These are like very small. This is like a, a, a plane can be there in two minutes. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I mean, these are the questions that uh, I, I don't want to go into conspiracy theories, but these are the questions that has the Israeli community has been asking. This kind of failure, a lot of people inside, again, conspiracy theories, I don't know why, I don't want to adopt any of them. It's like, it's because of Bibi was having under a lot of pressure from his Supreme Court. So he wanted something to kind of like divert it. And you know, when people want to divert something, like they make a conflict. Mm -hmm. But it kind of like, it, 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 it got out of hand. Mm -hmm. And the fact you can go in, Lily Willy with very primitive Lily Willy. Uh, <laughs> weapons and go in inside of Israel and come up. I mean, just a year ago, there were 50 Palestinians that were killed by snipers just because they came in closer to the, to the border and they were like holding flags. Mm -hmm. So the fact that they go in and you see like all of these military uh, bases empty for the taking and coming back with with cars and with people and with hostages. I mean, if I'm an Israeli citizen, I would be pissed. Of course, I want answers. I, mean, I, so I, 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 I would, I would, I would, I would like to have some answers. So I, I don't know. But Basim, let's go to the last thing because for me, I'm curious with solutions, right? Some say, well, this is going to keep happening. It's never going to stop. It's been going on for hundreds of years, a couple thousand years. It's going to be ongoing for another couple thousand years. Perfect. Okay, fine. So that's one argument. Now, for the people that maybe are solution oriented and they, they want to figure out a way to, you know, improve things. You said 06, Hamas gets elected because, you know, uh, what it was. But today it wouldn't happen. Today, if they do have an election, who controls the election? Because you, you, were, uh, you were a little bit uh, not elusive. You were not clear about why. Dude, that's sick. Okay. Yeah, I mean, uh, first and foremost, when someone says, when, when someone who is, like, uh, otherwise defending uh, Israel asks, what are the solutions then? 
It's over. It's Jover. It's perfect. That is the best point you can get to in a conversation. Okay. So I just want to, I just want to point that out because then you start talking about actual solutions. Then you can talk about the morality of the situation, not the morality of the, the offensive nature of ethnic cleansing that's happening currently, but also the morality of their daily maintenance of the apartheid. Okay. That's them throwing the towel boys. That's, that's your time to shine. Whenever you hear someone go, what are your solutions? Okay. Because that from that point on, they're going to say, oh, this is unrealistic. To which you can always respond with, you know what's unrealistic? Thinking that you can get away with doing an apartheid without like these human beings actually fucking getting mad. You know what I mean? Now, having said that, having said that, currently, if there was an election conducted today, Hamas, gangbusters. Okay, they're winning. The only opposition to that is the Palestinian Authority. And God damn, they are the least popular institution for understandable reasons amongst Palestinians, okay? There is no one that is less popular than the Palestinian Authority. Why? Because they are seen understandably and correctly by the Palestinian population as collaborators. They are just simply an extension. They are simply an extension of Israel's violent security force, okay? There's a Palestinian face to the brutality. That's it. They give up Palestinian resistance members positions they routinely lock them up so they can be tortured unacceptable okay they're completely unacceptable their position is unacceptable that is by design israel again a testament to israel's audacity and foolishness to show the palestinian people year over year that if you collaborate with us we're gonna turn you into fucking prison guards insane you had every opportunity every step of the way since Arafat, to show the Palestinians that if you collaborate with us, we are going to give you a life of dignity. And what did the Palestinians get for 30, 40 fucking years? They got death, destruction, more oppression, and 750,000 settlers in the West Bank in that same time frame. Unacceptable. To think that that would come with no cost is ridiculous. We are no longer talking about the morality of the situation. Because the morality of the situation is clear, unacceptable, inhumane, gross. But it doesn't work from a pragmatic situation either. This sheer arrogance cannot allow you to continue maintaining this apartheid. Okay? That's it. So, having said that, yes, if uh, there was an election conducted today, I know what the polls look like. I've seen them. Hamas would win. Hamas's popularity always increases when Israel attacks. Because in that position, Hamas is no longer seen as the civil governing body that does a relatively piss-poor job, all things considered. Let's be fucking real, right? One, because they are living under an Israeli blockade. And two, because, of course, there's corruption there as well. They're not very good at doing civil governance. Do the best they can. Some steal. Some are brutal, right? But when Israel attacks, they are the defenders. When Israel attacks as the belligerent occupier, Hamas, Al-Qassam, Palestinian Islamic Jihad, those are the people that fight back, okay? That is precisely the reason why their popularity increases when Israel does attack, okay? So that's what I wanted to mention. Now, of course, there's Marwan Barghouti. I think I'm not butchering his name, I hope, who is uh, declared the Israeli, I mean, not necessarily, what the fuck? Sorry. The Palestinian Nelson Mandela. Uh, he is uh, more popular than, uh, as a figurehead, than Yahya Sinwar. Uh, he is more popular, who is, of course, on the Hamas side. He is more popular than uh, Mahmoud Abbas, of course. Has Hassan talked about being covered on uh, Philly D? Yes, very disappointing. Actually, it wasn't that bad. All things considered, I think the clickbait made me more upset than the coverage. Obviously, I would have wished for him not to show, you know, <laughs> reasonable criticism of me by, like, someone who was just fucking foaming out of the mouth. But I do think that a lot of people uh, will, will recognize that the... He changed the title now? Oh, okay. I, I think a lot of people that watch that video will come, you know, come away with it going, okay, so this guy is just like fucking psycho. Like his response, this guy's response, unless you're like a live stream fails poster, I suspect, okay, I suspect that the, the, 
I suspect that the people that watch that video and their takeaway uh, is like, oh, this is really, really good uh, commentary and criticism are going to be like Redditors for the most part. Yeah, because he is fucking unhinged. Let's continue. I do not have fair elections today. Who controls the elections? I wish Hamas is not in charge of... I wish the whole thing about the Islamization Judaism of this conflict is not there. Because that is making everything worse. So how do you get the whole idea Hamas? about like putting so much religion on the Israeli side and on the Muslim side? It has actually, actually, it is the reason why this conflict is getting worse and worse and worse. It's because now people are like kind of like rooting for the divine, and whenever you put religion in any conflict, this is going to get worse and worse. So, the thing is, there is a problem, a fundamental problem between the, for the rights of the Palestinians in the land of, of Palestine. Now, whether you create a, 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 a Palestinian nation on the 22 percent after with the, using uh, like Jimmy Carter once said it is we would ha would have to have like a two, two state solution using Gaza using the borders of 1967 with modification and land swap that is like and that is what the Palestinian Authority are actually accepting Hamas does not accept that and there's other people who does not accept that. And at the same time, people on the Israeli side does not accept that. You have people, radical people on both sides who want all or none and, be, and kind of fairly moderate people who want to stay in the middle and say, all right, let's have a little bit of a swap. But what is happening right now is a one state and the two state solution is being shot and dead a long time ago. Because even if Benjamin Netanyahu, when he came out and he bragged about how he have spoiled the Oslo Accord and how Americans don't care and we have manipulated them and 80% of America are with us so we can do whatever they want, the, the hell we want, even if we can kill as many Palestinians as possible. And he goes there on camera. When he does that and there's no repercussions, I don't think it's going to get uh, any better. And I think it's going to be a matter of time until those Palestinians will be, it's not, if it's not today, it's not this year, it's the year after, all of this Gaza will be cleared out and the Palestinians will be pushed into, into Sinai and Israel will take it over. And it will not stop like that because if you put 2.2 2 million people, put them in, in Sinai, that will be a security threat because those people will have an open access to the sea and they will have weapons and then they will want to avenge what happened to them and they will go in and attack Israel. And now it's going to have a dual problem between a group of people between Israel and Egypt and that will not get any better. So I'm, 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 I'm just like telling you I'm not very optimistic about what will happen because if you don't have justice and you don't have uh, people what they want, they are just like people who are going to get justice in themselves. And then they would be called militant terrorists, freedom fighters, no matter how you would call them. But it's not going, going well. So w regarding Gaza, and I'm trying to come from a solution-based approach here, to be honest. At the end of the day, <coughs> everything comes down to money or security. Do you need that? No. Everything comes down to, to money or security. So you just gotta pull your shirt up. Oh, uh, uh, hold on. Oh, what, what's, what's happening? It's a heater pad. Let's put on your He's got a bad back. Let's up. let's get his back right before I ask this question. Mm. Put <laughs> dude, I dude, I am value tained. I am not. I have never been more value tained than I am in this moment. Okay, he just like me for real. Okay, is the rest of this still popping off or what? You got to go on this podcast. I'm sure Patrick, but David would love to uh, have me on. I I suspect. Treating the guests with dignity and respect while you ignore genocide? Listen, at least they're treating him with dignity and respect as he, you know, uh, is, is criticizing them for ignoring genocide. Hook up the shirt. That's how we played massages. We got a, massa we got a masseuse coming in the house. <laughs> well, thank you guys because I'm really in, a, in, a, in, in pain. I can't even... Well, you've been traveling for, for <laughs> how many days? <laughs> I've, 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 we have what is called unreasonable hospitality. Yeah, Pat doesn't play. While we're having a friendly debate, we're going to make sure that you're back. All right, so okay, go ahead. Solution for Gaza. Yeah, well, go look, for it. Yeah. Israel wants security. Ultimately, he's still too Iranian to let his guest sit there with his back broken. Okay? That's it. That's it. My man. Oh God, I love Patrick Bet David. Yeah, they are genocide apologists, but they aren't bad hosts. Thank you. Exactly. You need to talk with Bassem Yusuf. Uh, ironically, I have actually. Um, I, I've actually met him. We were on a panel together. I think it was like progressive Muslims or progressives. Uh, yeah, like some, some kind of like progressive Muslim panel we did together, uh, at Politicon, you know, would you ever go on a pod with a fear and, uh, cast? Absolutely not. I would never subject my wonderful friends 
whose brains are broken in different ways, but I would never subject them to like the fucking mania of the the disgusting mania of of uh, political uh, commentary, the political sphere. That's insane. Never ever would I do that. I would never ever do that just like i'd never subject you to the top of the hour ad break which is why i urge you to subscribe at the top of the hour when there's a three minute ad break right and if you no longer want to see those ads then you know that's what you got to do you can also get gifted a sub if you're lucky here is the three minute ad break now boom and gaza many countries in the middle east need and want prosperity okay israel's whole thing their whole contention is Listen, we just can't have another October 7th, period. And we're going to do everything to protect our citizens. The people in Gaza, they're no different than other people in the Middle East. They want prosperity. The problem in the Middle East, in my opinion, my humble opinion, it's not just an Islamic issue. It's certainly not just an Israeli issue. Because, is, the, it, by the way, it is an Iranian issue. That's the tip of the spear when it comes to the uh, mafia-like regime that's running Iran over there. But it's socioeconomic. There's, people need economic improvements. People need political uh, certainty. And when you combine that with Islamic fundamentalism, when you sprinkle in a little jihad, throw in a little anti-Zionism and rhetoric, you'll get what's going on in Gaza. But look at the countries that are thriving in the Middle East and look at the countries that are basically the Gazas of the Middle East. Un Fuck yeah, baby. Yeah, that's such a sick take, man. That, no, that's cool, dude. I mean, it just aligns so perfectly with white supremacy in general. You know what I mean? It aligns so perfectly. <clears throat> it's the same principle behind, like, look at the conditions in Africa. Clearly, these guys can't, you know, conduct their affairs themselves. We got to sprinkle a little bit of uh, civilizing occupation in there to, to, you know, stop these barbarians. That's it. It's not the violence of colonialism that has set back these areas, okay, despite their natural resources and overall wealth. It must be that they just simply can't deal with it. Why? Culture. Culture. That's the reason. Culture. Cultural. Not race. I'm not saying race. I'm saying culture. Unemployment rates. People need jobs, okay? If kids don't have jobs, if, you're, if youth unemployment is is skyrocketing what are these young people supposed to do the highest unemployment rate in the middle east jordan 23 percent palestinians right next to them and also at 23 percent then you have sudan libya tunisia lebanon iraq yemen afghanistan iran morocco that's so funny it's like i wonder why that happened like that's crazy i wonder how that happened and i wonder why that happened syria turkey egypt all above 10% unemployment, with the exception of your country of, of Egypt, 7%. Every single one of those countries, political upheaval, especially what's going on in Iraq, Afghanistan, Palestine. But did you notice that all the good countries, high unemployment rate, low unemployment rates, Qatar, 0.3%, one of the richest countries on earth. They just... Hmm. What's going on? Dude, much to consider, guys. What's going on? What's going on there? Much to consider. Hmm, dude, do not do not look at who is more closely aligned with America. Please don't do it. I am valuetained. Ah, oh, it's so good. His analysis literally is like, look at all these countries that are basically lapdogs for American imperialism in the region and how much better off they are versus all of these other countries that were fucking bombing. <laughs> that's crazy it's like yeah man look 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 at that now obviously jordan isn't bombed but like the jordanian population is basically a fucking holdover state also created specifically to deal with like israel's violence okay their population is just fucking mostly refugees dog every single country that you're talking about is either like a a uh, a colonial cutout from like some Western imperialist forces that decided like these are the fucking lines drawn here, okay? <laughs> or th it's the same, but also on top of that, they're getting military and material support from the United States of America. But meanwhile, by the way, while we're talking about Yemen, uh, U.S. has conducted its fourth round of strikes against the Houthi targets of Yemen. U.S. official confirms to CBS News the strikes targeted several sites that were prepared to launch attacks according to the official. 
I do love that he said the good countries. Just had the World Cup there. Richest country in the Middle East. Bahrain, 1.9%. Israel, 3.3%. UAA, 3.4%. By the way, the UK's unemployment rate is 3, 3.5%. So UAE is better than the UK. Kuwait, 3.7%. Same as the US. When people don't have jobs and they don't have purpose and they don't have meaning and they can't work and they can't basically have political uh, econo economic sustenance for their family, they're going to resort to violence. That's why every single one of those countries that is 10 percent unemployment, those countries are, as Trump says, shithole countries. But all the nice countries, Qatar, UAE, they're all thriving. So it's not an Islamic problem. It's an economic problem. Now, if you want. Dude, I swear to God. I mean, conservatives, <laughs> I mean, he's not wrong, but he has the causation reversed. Yes, but also he like neatly ties it while he's saying it's an economic problem. He's trying to do like sociological commentary, okay? While simultaneously like, I mean, he's like further ahead than I guess the a Sam Harris type, but he's still going back to the same good, bad dynamic. These are good countries, and then these are bad countries. As an economist, I want to redact it myself. Please make this man stop. Wait, what do you mean? As an economist, you should understand that there are good countries, and then there are bad countries. And good countries have good economies, okay? And we don't bomb them. Bad countries have bad economies, and we do bomb them. And their economies get worse, not because we bomb them, but because they're bad. The response to the bombing campaign, and no material support in the aftermath, of said bombing campaign like we did for japan for example implies that you're bad only to be worse bombs <laughs> fall out of the sky when you have a bad culture i want to talk gdp just for my last point the countries with the lowest gdp per persons those countries are disasters afghanistan you know what the average person in afghanistan makes a year 350 dollars a year afghanistan Syria, 420. Yemen, 650. Sudan, 1100 bucks. Morocco, 3400. Palestinians, above any of those guys, 3700 bucks a year. Lebanon, 4000. Egypt, 4200. Conversely, every single rich country has zero problems. Qatar, GDP, $87,000. Better than the United States. Better than the United States. Israel, 55,000. UAE. I'm going to lose my mind. Brother, come on. Brother, come on. That's crazy. I do love personally when, like, for example, he's comparing apples to apples. What's the problem? <laughs> yeah, you're right. Um, saying Qatar has zero problems is a fucking wild take. Yeah, no, I, I think it's, it's hilarious when people are like, dude, the Houthis brought back slavery to Yemen. Where did I read that? On a fucking Saudi newspaper that was... <laughs> that reported on it while Saudi Arabia was doing genocide in Yemen. Okay. That's it. And all other coverage on the matter straight up comes from third party sources and whatnot, obviously American back think tanks and, uh, and the like, but like all of the, the actual coverage of like slavery in Yemen pertains to uh, this being like a tribal aspect that uh, existed under British occupation and no, there's no evidence that like the, the, the Houthis personally reinstituted slavery. Now, having said that, of course, that's not like there's a difference between, for example, someone can say, Hassan, what about Tibet? What about Tibet? Right? Like, yeah, there's a difference between unironically fighting against feudal slavery and also joining forces with the, the same military that is like liberating your country from slavery. Okay. Versus slavery being a permanent position historically in the country is a byproduct of being severely colonized okay and then having another country that also utilizes slavery come in and blow you up with american bombs how did that fix slavery it did not okay isn't it just andrew tady and ecom bro he's retaining brokey 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 yeah he's saying and i think this would be more honest okay <clears throat> he's saying that if if the Palestinian people actually signed up for the Valuetainment Podcast's very own econ course on Discord, the entire country would be on the rise, okay? I'm talking, they're making crypto, they're mining crypto, they're selling NFTs, they're selling the ugliest ape NFTs you've ever seen, okay? Please join my multi-level marketing scheme, Palestinians. 
<laughs> a rising tide lifts all boats, brother. 54,000. Kuwait, 40,000. I can go on and on and on here. I'm a bit confused with the slavery part. You're saying that slavery was bad because of the British people, so therefore it's not that bad? Not trying to do a gotcha? No, brother. What the fuck? Slavery is bad. That's it. I'm simply refuting the point that, like, slavery was restored by the, the Houthis. The fuck? <laughs> That's an insane take. No. Slavery is, is unconditionally bad. There is no, there is no uh, uh, defense of this whatsoever. And also... One, we're not bombing Yemen because of slavery. And two, there is no world in which, like, bombing Yemen has been able to uh, defeat slavery anyway. If anything, it is a byproduct of them being a fucking colony for a very long time, including, like, up to the 60s. That is the reason why there's so much economic uh, destitution. All right. The bottom line is this, what I've seen in the Middle East, it comes down to socioeconomics. Then you sprinkle in a little Islamis, is, Islamism in there. Why is every rich country in the Middle East have no problems? But all the poor countries are suicide bombings, terrorists. Gaza had the opportunity to invest billions of dollars into infrastructure. In what? Into infrastructure. How? But they built tunnels and bombs. But my question is... No, no. I, I basically, here's no, my... Here, you're here, wrong. I'm, you're wrong. I'm Gaza has not built tunnels and you're bombs. You're wrong. You're wrong. You said like as if you, they, as if there was like some sort of a, a prosperous source of economy, and all of us, as I said, took that and put it on in tunnels. What you're missing here is Gaza since 2006 is under blockade, and even the medicine, even the water, even the electricity is controlled by Israel. They don't have... I'm open... not asking you about Gaza. I'm asking you about no, the I'm, Middle I'm, East, I'm, to be I'm, clear. I'm, no, you want to focus on Gaza, and then you want to turn you, it back you, on Israel. I'm asking you specifically... I'm sorry. Let's not why... talk about Israel, if that would make you no, a little I'm, bit I'm, nervous. This, that, Do you we can talk, talk about, about Israel for the next two hours. you want to talk about other countries in the, in the Arab world so we can prove that Arabs could be bombed at any time because we were fucking poor? No, I, that's not what I'm saying. You're, what that's I'm, exactly what you're saying. No, like they're just like poor people killing each other, and we're just like there watching them. No, I'm, I'm sorry that, dude, I like you, but seriously, your undertone is fucking racist. From the beginning until the end, you are looking at those people as lesser people who have made bad choices, right. and because He's they right. are poor, they are okay to be fucking bombed by Israel. Okay, this you're, is the third uh, time you've used the you're, racist you're, word. You're, I've never uh, said that uh, once. Uh, <laughs> He's right, and he should say it, okay? And he's actually much... So are there slaves in Yemen? As far as I understand, most likely, yes. There are, of course, slaves in uh, all of the Gulf nation countries, including those who uh, bombed Yemen. I want to remind people that this is a country that was under a genocidal occupation and blockade. No, 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 no. As a Yemeni, we've never heard of this. Okay, here's the thing. I can only go off of... I can only go off of... What I know from history and what I know from not the Saudi Arabian article, okay? Sorry, my food is here. I'm not talking about the Saudi Arabian article that was like, oh, Yemen is doing like child brides and, and mass slavery or anything like that, okay? Uh, I was reading the majority of human trafficking for slavery in Yemen all get exported to Saudi Arabia. It's not surprising, but what I'm simply stating is that, of course, there are slaves everywhere still, so it is not... Yeah, I said there's probably slavery in tribal parts, but it's not in a major way. Yes, there's no institutionalized form of slavery in the way that they are presenting it. And the institutional, I, I said that as well. I said that there is uh, likely slavery occurring in, uh, in, in tribal parts of Yemen. However, um, it is not like an institutionalized form of slavery. Okay, and slavery definitely still very much exists in all of the countries that are currently bombing Yemen. There is no way of fixing slavery by bombing a country anyway there's never been a moment where you were like let's like look at libya okay we did not restore we restored open air slave markets in libya by bombing libya you do not destabilize a country and and fix its slavery problem that way we are not blowing up louisiana because of the louisiana state penitentiary's existence i would never argue for that i think that's ridiculous and if you point to the civil war I think you would understand that there's a difference between a civil war versus what Saudi Arabia was doing. They certainly were not doing it to abolish slavery in Yemen. They have fucking slaves themselves. Okay. It's just entirely ridiculous.
under you? To, your undertone is very, very, very offensive. For so people. when I read stats, yeah, yeah you, you don't like you, my you, tone you, you, when you, I read you stats. Write your, you read the stats basically telling people like you see because they're rich, they got this the, the, to themselves. The, the rich people are better. The poor people are okay. So we can have to kill them no, every now and that's then. That's not what I said. And you're putting words in my mouth, and it's actually super disrespectful. I'm reading stats to you. I'm saying how can we uplift the poor countries in the Middle East? How can Remove we turn the blockade? That's number one. No, 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 no. I Remove said the, the Middle East. East, funny guy. Remove the blue I said the Middle said- East. You're talking about Gaza. I'm naming all these countries that are thriving. Qatar, Bahrain, UAE, mm. Israel, Silicon Valley of the Middle East. Mm. What can be done with the countries that are quote unquote shitholes? Okay, give me a country like a shithole. Give me an example. I'm looking at the unemployment rates in all like, these give countries. Me one, give me one country. Afghanistan. Okay. Syria. Afghanistan. Lebanon. Why, why Afghanistan got a, became a shithole country? Because they endorsed the Taliban. They, they did. The, they did. Yeah. Isn't that a little bit of a reductive way to tell history? Because at the beginning, there was no uh, uh, Taliban, and then the Soviet Union came in, and then America came in, supported the... Wait, 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 The Mujahideen were propped up before the Soviet Union came in. Partially due to the communist government of Afghanistan's insane violence towards them, towards the, the Muslim uh, tribal sects, okay? But also... Partially as a byproduct of America's direct involvement in radicalizing the Mujahideen and arming them. Pointing that out. I was continue. The Taliban, make them bigger than they were. And then at the end of the day, they support, if you remember Rambo 3, Rambo mm-hmm. 3 was supporting the Taliban. So Taliban was really cool. And even they were, they were even hailed by right-wing Christians as freedom fighters, anti-communists. And then what happened? America, some people like the Richard Wilson wall wanted him to come in to put some schools that no, 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 we spend, we spend all of this money of tanks on, on weapons. We don't need to put them schools. What happened? Taliban flourished all because of America interfered, made it shitty. He's literally talking about Charlie Wilson's war, dude. He's, he's repeating Charlie Wilson's war. It's so funny. Left everything. Taliban froze it. And then America went in again, spent $2 billion, making even two terrorist laws, made it even worse. So when you tell me like a country is not surviving, it's not because, oh, because they're bad people. They don't know. You have to come into the root cause. Every single country that you said, I can bring you the root cause of how America and the West has fucked this country to become Go to way. Syria. Go to Lebanon. Go yeah. to there. Yeah. Bashar al-Assad. Yeah. Killing his own people. Gassing his own people. <laughs> Big bro said, go to Lebanon. As a country that hasn't been impacted by Western forces, he said, go to Syria. I'm sorry, dude, but you're out of your mind. Even Turkey is a nation in the Mena region that has been impacted by American influence. The only reason why Turkey was able to maintain its like economic prosperity for as long as it fucking did is because we aligned with America and became an anti-communist force in the region. That's it. It's NATO. It's NATO that saved Turkey. And not, and not because NATO is a defensive position. NATO made Turkey a military base for America. So America allowed it to exist without interference. I'm choosing my words carefully. Fuck NATO. NATO can suck my cock. It is directly the same as a uh, Italian mob style protection racket. Okay? Severe Dunning-Kruger. What? He's way out of his desk. If you're Dunning Kruger, oh, the other uh, guy. People, tell me what that's who's Americans su- who, who, Who's he supported? Who was he supported by? That's the whole problem yeah. in the Middle East. Okay, you have Sunni, you have Shiite, you've got Houthi rebels, you got you got um, every people, single the, country in the Middle East. It's a quagmire East, wrapped in a riddle, Middle East, and then surrounded by every, Islamic terrorists. Every single Middle figure East. Figure it out. It's, it's, uh, Bashar Hussein is not a uh, is not. You cannot really put. Bashar Hussein as a Islamic terrorist thing, you know? Because no, because he's, he's fighting ISIS, yeah, which we're funding but ISIS to fight against who's Bashar fight, al-Assad. Who, who's funding ISIS? You tell me. Qatar, who's actually funding, funded by the United States, all right? So, yeah, you, you don't understand. You no. see, this is how f- complicated. Because I do understand pe- how complicated people, it is. Pe- people in the Middle East are either supported by Russia or supported by America, and they're fighting each other. So at the end of the day, you have people who have come to power because they have been supported. I'm going to be honest with you. That was very interesting. That was the most interesting thing that um, that Basim Yusuf said. As a guy who was like uh, anti-Muslim brotherhood, obviously his Muslim brotherhood is fundies, but like was the more um, was the democratically elected leadership that was coup in Egypt, who he literally uh, criticized as well. The fact that he stopped there to to correct him on Assad not being an Islamist is really interesting. Normally, most liberals will just go, yeah, no, like. 
I, and and I'm not like fond of Assad at all, for the record. I'm I'm letting you know. But the fact that he actually corrected him on that misinformation is is really interesting because most of the time liberals just like let that they just um uh, they just let that slide. It's really interesting that he did that. I wonder why. I would have I would have expected him to just like let that go. Supporting by one of the superpower, and their fighting is against each other. Yeah. You know, you have you you have the Hamiditi, and you have the uh, the army in Sudan. Each one of them is supported by external powers. So it's not about like the Islamization of them. It's not about the economy is bad because at the end of the day, these are warlords who are fighting against each other. But to reduce that, in order, why well, can't they just like make some money while you while you completely ignore the power of the international power that? Bro, you are literally talking to a multi-level marketing guy. I'm sorry, of course his, his analysis on the situation is going to start and end it. Why don't they just do a MLM? Like, I don't get it, bro. Why don't the motherfuckers in Syria just, like, buy a valuetainment, uh, you know, financial seminar? are involved into that like for example the country like mali mali is like very very restless and the reason mali is restless that paris is there and it's putting up like some sort of a puppet uh, president so, so paris can continue taking its share of gold and putting it into uh, into its coffers so there is it's much more complicated than just selling islamization or mass islamization all of these power of play you just gave me a taliban and i give you the reason why america did that Saddam Hussein, Saddam Hussein, right? Saddam Hussein, he was the baby of the of the United States administration. And then he went in and he invented Kuwait. Who gave him the money? Who gave him that kind of power? All right? It has been going on. Also, Saddam Hussein, another dude you can't really say is like like Islamic fundamentalist at all, right? Like that's that's what's actually quite interesting is that the most prescient institutional power in the Middle East oftentimes is, are, are groups that are no longer Western aligned, Okay, and uh, oftentimes start off as like secular, um, secular groups. Just saying, foreign adversaries. Gaddafi also wasn't really a fundamentalist. I guess Gaddafi is a wild card in many respects. Forever, the superpower are using the, the 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 smaller countries, and they are controlling their own leaders in order to go fight each other. Because at the end of the day, it works for them. No, there's no. You're, I'm in full agreement with you that that's a mystery wrapped in a riddle, wrapped in a quagmire. What's going on in the Middle East? And I'm in full agreement with you that there are proxy wars all over the Middle East, no doubt. But the tip of the spear that's funding all the chaos. Pat has said that this is the year of chaos. The tip of the spear with the chaos is Iran, and there's no. I mean, who's funding Iran? China. Russia, they have a relationship. Azerbaijan, they have some sort of relationship. How do you deal with Iran? Because Iran's no, let's bomb greatest it. export... <laughs> let's bomb it. No, well, we haven't done it yet. No, no, let's bomb it. I, I don't I, think we should bomb I, I, it. I think we should. Okay. No, 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 let's well, bomb it. Then let's, let's I mean, elect you for a government I mean, official, I mean, you and you're no better than what's going I mean, on. You, you're you're no better than, than that, the that, minister. That so that, you're the Nikki that, Haley camp. That Nikki is Haley. The let's answer. go for it. That's the answer. Bomb Afghanistan, bomb Iraq, bomb Palestine, bomb Iran, and let's see what happens. I speak sarcasm how, how, better than the next no, no, guy. No, no, I trust you. I know you're being sarcastic. But what do you do about a regime that is funding Houthis, Hamas, Hezbollah? They are the ones who are sowing discord. I, I what do you do about Iraq? I, rem I remember like Colin Powell in the Security Council, like, let's bomb Iraq. And then they bombed Iraq. How is bombing Iraq had done to this country? It was a let's fucking disaster. Oh, yeah, really? Yeah. But it will not be a fucking disaster to bomb Iran, right? I'm agreeing with you. I know yeah. that you're speaking no, sarcasm. No, but, 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 so but, but it's so funny. Okay, so but bombing Gaza is good then? Oh, you hated the Iran invasion. But you tell me for the past fucking hour that, um, you know, it's totally just to bomb uh, Gaza. People but you see, you say like, oh, it's all about Iran. It's all it starts like of this. Of course, it is all because about like, Iran. Because 20, who's funding the because, Houthis? Because, who's funding Hezbollah? Who's 20, funding Hamas? Because twenty years billions ago, of dollars they're giving to terrorist organizations. Because twenty years ago, are these guys all Iranian? I know Patrick Bed David is Iranian, but are they all Iranian? He's Jewish. Okay, so what, brother? I live in I live in Los Angeles. I don't know if you know that, but most of the Jewish people in my immediate vicinity are Iranian. <laughs> So saying, uh, what do you call it? So saying, no, he's not. He's not Iranian. He's Jewish. Is a really funny, very American take, bro. I don't know if you know this, but there's still Jews living in Iran, <laughs> like literally, like to this day. It's a very tiny number. Yeah. Oh, and you just want to ignore ago, that? Ten, 20 years ago, it was Iraq. 
And 20 years ago, it was I, Afghanistan, I, I, and they bombed them. I got a question yeah. for both of you. I got a question for both of you. I'm, I'm actually really curious and uh, 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 listen to both of you guys. This is my question. Okay. The part that both of you guys agree that we had a guy on. God, thank God Patrick is talking. Fucking my goat, dude. He's literally Bizarro Jank. God, my goat. Someone said he's Assyrian, Iranian, Armenian. And it's like, other than Iranian, this dude is literally just like, if he was fucking Greek, it would be like the antithetical Turk. He's like the anti-Turk, okay? Like Bizarro World Jank is actually all of the different ethnicities. He's like Kurdish. If you said he was Kurdish too. <laughs> it's like all the different ethnic backgrounds that the Ottoman Empire fucking did horrible things to and the Turks are horrible things to. Uh. A couple, the only guy, you know, one of the guys I I've had him. on a couple times, his name is John Perkins. He wrote a book called The Economic Hitman. I don't know if you've read yeah, the book. Know. You know who he is. Okay. Yes! And <clears throat> one of the things he talked about the model on I what it was, they go to president and he, that's what he did, by the way. This I love these guys that like, understand these like they read these books or they at least they claim to read these books and like they maybe like summarize it right and it, it is it's it's wild to me when uh they're like aware of this but they still have like a fucking reactionary framework how is that even possible like how do you see it and then you still uh this was his job okay mm -hmm. he goes to a country that has a natural resource or location oil it's close to something that they can have some kind of control. And they go to them and they say, here's what we're going to be doing. We're going to come here and we're going to bring billions of dollars of infrastructure to your country. However, here's what you're going to give us. Pa, 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 pa. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then the president who said no, he says a couple of them they killed. Oh, shit. That was his job. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And in, he doesn't say he killed them, but he says... If you said no, when I went back and I had to report back to the people that I work for that you're saying no to, guess what? Bad things are going to happen to you and your family. Wow. And it happened. Mm -hmm. Then the next model was we come, we bring infrastructure. Then we make the country go bankrupt. This is so reductive, but awesome. I, I love these guys, bro. Corrupt. Then you give us everything. Then we control you. Are we naive enough to believe? That's what China is doing now. Exactly. But, but, but pre-China. I'm going to die. <laughs> he literally just said, here's a guy who did this for America, a practice that's still happening to this day. You know who's doing that? China. <laughs> Bro, did you not read the book? What, what do you mean? This guy's like, yeah, dude, he was actually working for China. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Wow. Ah, fuck, he's so sick. I know. And we did that. America did that. And for others have done that. And Russia's done that. Other people. Have, and UK is UK tried to do that to Iran. And then later on, eventually, UK, US, you know, Germany, France, these guys got rid of the Shah because... You know, uh, you know, coup and all. The people have been involved with economic hitman for a long time. Here's a question for you, Bassam. Here's a question for you, Adam. Okay. So we both agree that that's going on. Okay. We both agree that that's been going on for many decades. No one can even dispute it nowadays. But now we're in this shithole. And what I mean by shithole, shit show, shit show. is insanity everywhere. Bassam, what do you do now? Is it more from the standpoint where a part of you was almost not optimistic? You're like, Pat, I don't even, I, I think this thing's going to go and nothing's going to happen. It's going to continue all this other stuff, right? What do we do now? We were told uh, uh, during uh, uh, 2015, 2016, when it was a debate between what, Hillary Clinton and Trump? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what were we told? If Trump becomes a president, a uh, war is going to happen. War this three. is what's going to happen. So everybody, we're all like, oh, shit, it's going to be pretty bad. This guy's going to have a, do you really want this guy to have the finger on the button? Okay. He goes in. ISIS disappears. There's no war. It's quiet, low key. Everything's good. Boom, boom, boom. And then, no, no oh, that's good. And then, boom, Biden gets elected. He's going to be peace. He's going to bring everybody together. He's going to bring this. He's going to bring that. Then he comes in, and then, you know, Afghanistan happens within months. Mm -hmm. $83 billion of equipment being left. Then you got Ukraine, Russia, and then you got this. 
And then there's a bunch of guys, economists, that are talking about, you know, this is China's year to try to invade Taiwan because Taiwan's got an election coming up. It's a shit show, basically, is what you're but, saying. Yeah, so, but, but, the, but the point is, like, there's so many contradictions in politics as well. At a point like this, Basim, where, you know, mainstream media is not going to tell us the real story because they're maybe not even getting the real story themselves on what's happening behind closed doors. What do you do today? There is one of the most advanced military. Dude, wait, this guy is literally saying like, this guy's doing the America bad, but in like the ways that my interlocutors think I do it, where he's like, <laughs> remember when Biden invaded Ukraine? <laughs> like there's a mismanagement there. Okay, there's a mismanagement there, but what the fuck? Like, yeah, sure, America is not completely removed from the continuation of the Russian invasion and the way that it did, it could have set terms significantly better i don't know given assurances to russia that they're not gonna uh they're not gonna uh, uh try to advance ukraine into nato things of that nature now of course that still would not have you know it is still there's a likelihood that it couldn't have worked right reinstitute the the minsk protocols things of that nature okay it's america's reaction to events that uh, is bad it's not that like america invaded ukraine i don't know where he's coming from with the way that he's talking about I feel like I feel like a lot of uh, Republicans and like right wingers will just take the the unironic like America bad position only when a Democrat's in power, and then they turn it up and they go America good now because Trump was so sick. And it's like no, you have to have the America bad position unconditionally and across the board, depending on the situation and what America's actions are. <clears throat> you can't have it both ways. For you armies in the region in the world supported by the west supported by america have vote open voting like they diverting their vote all over and they're killing people for all that time and nobody is doing anything for who israel. are you talking about i'm talking about israel okay all right so the killing has to stop and i'm not talking about gaza i'm talking about what they do in the west bank every single day in the west bank that all of these people are being killed in the west bank and there's no Hamas came out from West Bank to do the, 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 the 7th of October. All right. Just a couple of days ago, like a woman was walking with her children. Stop, pop, 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 snap. Walking the street. That is the regular days of people in the West Bank. Do you think the problem is Gaza? What you see in Gaza is an accelerated, exaggerated form of what's happening in the West Bank, too. So it's you have a country right. that has occupied the land and they are like gave, making people living like animals. And if you deal people with like animals, they will come up as animals. Right. So that is the crux of all. We can talk about politics and about economy. It's here till the kingdom comes. What is happening is... Wait, that wasn't a young girl, was it? That was actually a ch like a baby. Or it could be another one of those. Because there's always like... I think she was two or four or something. Yeah, like I think it was literally like a toddler. Or was that the child in the car? God, Israel's so fucking awful. It's just so awful. Yeah, Sky News called her a young lady. Oh, no! Look at that! Fuck! Fuck! What do I do? In such a fat guy moment? Shut the fuck up! What do I do? You get a paper towel? <laughs> no. Oh. oh, I'm so cooked. Don't waste it. Lick it all. I'm not licking to fucking... I'm licking to suck it out. <laughs> So stupid, God. <laughs> My man said, don't waste it. Okay, okay, I think it's fine. It's Jujuk, it's Jujuk. There is, in, is horrible injustice happening every single day. They're taking people, strip them up, t saying them that they're Hamas. They're, they are like, they, you have like, you have like an 11 person being killed every hour. You have 247 person being killed every day. That is in five days. That is like 1,400 people that were killed in this uh, October 7th. You have 30,000 people, and the thing is, when you say 20,000, 30,000, numbers don't care. It don't mean anything anymore. If I told you a million people died in Gaza, you will not flinch because their numbers uh, have become so. It's e true. It's, it's no nobody. Yeah, I don't. I don't disagree. Nobody. So we go into these circular motions. How can we stop that again? How is that? No, there is killing happening every day. My wife's family have actually cheated death so far for 100 days because they've been running from Khan Yunus to Rafah, back to Khan Yunus, and they were told in the beginning that Khan Yunus and Rafah are the safe place because it's in the house. And then they were telling them, these are the safe path, yeah. take these safe path, these are the buses, they will run into the buses, and Israel will bomb the buses. 
after being guaranteed that this is a safe path. This is murder every day. So I don't know all of these circular words about like river to the sea. Patrick Bet David looking at how he's going to somehow tie this back to like a Discord econ group that will save <laughs> how how a crypto server that he puts together uh, will, will help the Palestinians uh, overcome Israel's genocidal ambitions. I don't even know who this Patrick guy is. Dude, he's the best what's happening to, that doesn't make any sense while people are being killed every single day we have a tragedy a, a, a genocide a holocaust happening in gaza and everybody is just like just like playing their balls it's like what do you think about the economy what do you think about what do you think about iran that's bullshit they're killing right happening right now and we're just like watching it and trying to fill time with useless conversation but how do you fix it short term though because short make term. Israel stop. There is no. How do you do no, that? Okay. How exactly. Do you do that? <laughs> Great question. And once again, now you're on the winning side. Okay. We got Tarek. I'm asking Murat uh, to see if he can give you an answer. I don't know what's happening. I don't know why it's slow. Tarek's internet is bad today, which is weird because it was perfectly fine. America has to t tell Israel stop because basically Israel is a client state. It's taking all of its money in the states. It has actually sucked America dry with all of the money that it's taking away from him, and yet it's not doing anything. So why do you think Biden administration is not telling him to stop? Calling Gaza a holocaust is a dangerous use of the word. Shred up, bust him, needs to be better than that. Brother, like, yes, the holocaust is different, 100%. But, like, if you think that he wasn't, if you think that he was trying to do holocaust denial or holocaust revisionism and not simply using the term interchangeably with genocide in this moment, I don't want to tell you, like... The Holocaust is a genocide, but not all genocides are the Holocaust. That's the point that the chatter is making, and it, it is correct. It is correct. Israel officials are calling it the Holocaust. I mean, yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't make this comparison, but I understand why others do. Overall, what is this? All Israeli border patrols among us. So, like, I don't have a, I don't have an issue with saying that the way that the Israeli occupying force is operating is, is similar to the Nazis. I mean, the dehumanization is similar to the Nazi. It's literally coming from the Holocaust, it's not by scale. No. Um, it's only similar to the Holocaust in the sense that... God, this is such an unproductive and stupid conversation. It's only similar to the Holocaust in the sense that there is a, 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 a systematic erasure of the, of the population that is under the occupation of the other force. That's it. Let's continue. Because they are fucking cowards. Because it seems that every four years, every American president go and kiss the, uh, the hand and bend the knees and go to APAC to make them sure that Israel is much more important in their foreign policy than America itself. And the only one who did not do it was Bernie Sanders, the only Jewish American candidate who, who refuses to go to APAC. And you cannot call that anti-Semitic. Right? And you have to be very, very careful about being anti-Semitic or anti-Jew. Because if you call me anti-Semitic, I'm just like, I'm going to fuck you, man. I'm not. Like, my, my idol is John Stewart. Bernie Sanders, I voted for him for presidency. Is it this whole thing about, like, using anti-Semitic and Islamophobe and everything to kind of, and transphobe to shut down the conversation? It's bullshit. You have a murderous country who have lied to the international community, who have actually... Uh, uh, neutered its own Ethiopian women because they didn't want black people to reproduce, who kidnapped Yemeni's Jewish people from their parents, who have met, like uh, countless atrocities, who have even have zoning zoning laws like uh, Jim, Crow, Jim Crow. It's like, what are this? This is like a racist country that is supported by the United States and it's kin. And you know, for the record, I know Norm Finkelstein's perspective on the um on the the coverage or the way that the holocaust is presented there are obviously certain aspects of that that i agree with with respect to um what kind of atrocity is allowed but the part that i don't agree with is that the holocaust is as it pertains to i guess um the european continent and european victims the singular most uh, mechanized systematized uh, a form of of state violence and ethnic cleansing. Now, why did I specify it like that? Because, obviously, what those same European colonial powers have done in Africa and African countries, like even Belgian, uh, the, the Belgian colonial project in the Congo, right? Like, those are all oftentimes evenly brutal, equally brutal, equally systematic. But when you put those qualifiers on it, I do agree 
that it is industrial genocide. Oftentimes, with the, and this is a weird distinction because it doesn't matter because you're still killing people, right? But oftentimes it was a, uh, in, I mean, not oftentimes, sorry. The, the industrial grade genocide of the Holocaust is, is um, with no discernible purpose other than just like ethnic cleansing, especially with the final solution and the acceleration towards the end. Whereas like all of the other colonial indigenous violence, like the violence the indigenous population was subjected to under colonialism had some secondary uh reason i guess you could say it's like liebensraum like if you consider that to be like a real reason right i think it's really most comparable to america and the native americans it is definitely it is definitely a a um i don't know the distinction i think comes from the the mechanization of the violence like it was like a machine of murder yeah like factory farming but for genocide because like what Israel's currently doing is, I think, pretty similar to the Armenian genocide. <laughs> Ironic to say that, considering that what Israel is also um, what Israel is also doing is is uh, identical to what like the Turkish government has done. At least uh, as far as I know, this is what I learned when I was growing up that it's the it's a lie that it's not real, right? It's more so a popu a forcible population transfer of a civilian population that. Um, a forcible population transfer of a civilian population that were uh, brutalized and killed in that time frame, in that process, uh, every step along the way, both directly in the villages, but also in the population transfer as well. So, like, it is very close, I would say, to the Nakba, personally. This is a very controversial thing for me to say as a Turkish person, but I do agree with it. Like, uh, or the Trail of Tears. Literally describing Native America, yeah, with the express purpose of creating... A re more living space, more living room. No, it's fine. There's a lot of racist country, horrible people, but they have, I've never seen a country killing 30,000 people within 100 days. This is 10 times the number of Ukrainians being killed in Russia in two years. It does not make any sense. And about nuclear weapons, yes, they have calculated it. Right now, they have calculated the number of, of weapons that have by the TNT, that they have room like three, uh, three, uh, three nuclear weapons in a very, very small part. So it's really about the killing. Stop the killing, and then we can talk. Yeah, but that's, that's okay, so... So that's, that's that line. Now let's not stop the killing. Let's talk more about no, circular no, and, what I'm and no, what I'm, stuff that doesn't make any sense. What, what, I'm, saying, what, what I'm saying is, why, no, I'm asking the question to say, we're, we're so in too deep that, that the amount of... What did he say about... I didn't understand what he said about Ukraine. Like, did he say that there was more Russian deaths in Ukraine than... I know ba Basim is not fucking pro-Russia, for the record. Right, civilians in Ukraine? Oh, that doesn't make any sense. What, what, was, what, was what I'm saying is, Biden, no, I'm asking the question to say, we're, we're so in too deep that, that the amount of parties involved is not as simple as stop the killing because... You, you, you know, the only way this works, and I'm, you know, I know you're a diehard President Trump fan. I know you're a big <laughs> fan of his, and, you know, you, you, you campaign for him and all that stuff. I've heard you getting up there. You open up for him all the time, which is beautiful. Oh, I to love see. Tr oh, yeah. Trump. He is my so, favorite. So, so let me ask you this. Let me, let, me, let me ask you this. Why do you think, you know, sometimes you, you sit there and you say, man, I can't stand that person. That person is da 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 and then, you know, shit, maybe am I wrong myself? Maybe that guy's not as bad as I think that guy's fucking. There's no way in the world I can say anything good about him. No way. If I do, God forbid if I do, right? I don't think there's more um, Palestinian deaths um, than Ukraine over the course of the past uh, uh, two years. <clears throat> oh, my God. This, pe this, this pepper is so spicy. Fuck. Oh, civilian casualties. From the 24th of February 2022, which marked the start of a large-scale armed attack by Russian Federation, till the 24th of September, the Office of um, the the fuck the Office of High Commissioner of the Human Rights in the uh, the United Nations fuck this pepper is kicking my ass has said that the recorded civilian casualties is 9,700 killed, 17,748 injured uh that's civilians fuck i'm dying if that pepper makes you feel like this you defo been whitewash bitch i eat spicy every day come on now
Yeah, I know the U.S. carried another round of strikes against the Houthis in Yemen. It's a regular old red pepper, or not a red pepper, it's a green pepper, but it's a very, it's a very hot one. It's not even spicy. I don't know how to describe it. It's hot. Uh, it's not a jalapeno. Okay. Do you think, like, every family, you know, has that one tough guy in the family. And when that person is alive, nobody does anything stupid. Do you know what I'm talking about? Every family has it. You have it. I have it. We all have it, right? It's what? an uncle. It's a grandfather. It's a father. It's somebody. Is What's he going to say? He's not the bully. It's not the bully. It's the guy that doesn't allow the bully to bully. That guy. Okay. It's the guy that the does... The protector. Even. Yeah, it's like the protector. It's kind of like you don't want to wake that guy up. Like, you know that one scene from Christopher Walken in a movie says, you know, every once in a while, the lion is sitting there and they come and pull him and they do this and they do the that. The hyenas are biting Every exactly. once in a while, the lion has to wake up and tell everybody. He says everybody knows what the lion is capable of. Yes. Right? This is why people put on their house sign that says what? Please tell me that's Donald Trump. Oh, my God. He's trying to say that's Donald Trump. Bro, virtually everything that is happening with respect to Joe Biden's foreign policy is a direct continuation of Donald Trump's foreign policy. That's insane. The major anger that I have towards Joe Biden is that he didn't reverse course on any of the shit. He stayed the course and followed it to a T. What the fuck are you saying? Oh, my God. What? There is a vicious snowflakes 2023 cope more copium. Dude, what are you talking about? Down to the fucking good shit like the Afghan pullout. Everything. I think that just means that foreign policy is not something decided by the president. I, I don't think it is. There can be um, some, some slight uh, differences for sure. So you've gained some weight. This is why I was going to shave my beard because motherfuckers say shit like this. I have not. I actually look sick. Like, super sick. Sicker than I did a couple months ago. I look hot as fuck. The issue is, the beard itself makes my face look fatter, which is why I was going to cut it. Don't take this person serious? No, I, I, I mean, I am. <sighs> you lost weight and are very strong. Thank you. I'm a lion. Um, just dog, dog yeah. you know, in the back. Of, this house believes in the Second Amendment. Whether they have a gun or not. The person that's trying to rob the house is going to say what? I, would, I don't want to go and rob a house that may have a gun in there, right? Mm -hmm. So what? that sign avoids conflict. Yes. Why do you think? Basel? No, dog. Having a, having a sign that says there's a gun in this house is basically a perfect opportunity to steal the gun. If I'm a criminal, I'm going in there and I'm stealing the gun. That's a loot box, bitch. That's, <laughs> the fuck do you mean? And for the record, that's not even a joke. That is what happens. I, I'm so curious to you know what kind of an answer you're going to give to this. Why do you think during Trump there was no war, no conflict, and we were expecting to see World War III under him? Why do you think? I have no idea. Uh, and I think because maybe Trump, as much as I don't like him, he was kind of business-oriented. He said, like, oh, I'm not going to... I'm going to lose my mind. I'm going to lose my mind. Dude, Trump literally assassinated Qasem Soleimani. What the fuck are you talking about? You always backtrack your positions because your face look fat. Shut up, dude. If that's a fucking top of the hour ad break debate that you're trying to get me to pay attention to, I'm going to tell you right now, okay? Your words are hurtful, but you know what else is hurtful? The top of the hour ad break, especially if you're not subscribed for $5 or for free. So at the top of the hour, there is a three minute ad break coming for you. You don't have to see those ads as long as you have subscribed personally for $5 or for free or by getting gifted a sub. Okay, here's the three minute ad break. Now, Meltdown Lemon. Thank you for the five tier one gifted subs. Is everyone in this room got the IQ of frozen piece of chicken? Uh, how dare you? Patrick but David is my goat. Putin didn't cause trouble for Trump because Trump is a fucking FSB asset. <clears throat> okay. The idea, actually, all right, here's something controversial I'm going to say. Are you ready? Blue Wizard Cult, thank you for the five of the subs. Here's something controversial I'm going to say, okay? What Patrick Bud David is saying is actually something that I've kind of mentioned as well, okay? Joe Biden looks inconsistent and weak when it comes to foreign policy for two reasons. One, because he's old and everybody thinks, oh, he's asleep at the wheel because he's old. 
and he doesn't inspire confidence, right? But the second reason why Joe Biden looks weak is because of America's diminishing soft power, which was happening under Donald Trump as well. However, it's because Biden does the liberal thing of speaking out of both sides of his mouth. The classic, we care about science, the science of climate change, but we're still going to keep drilling. That, when you do that on the global stage for a country like Israel, when you can't rein in your attack dog and you openly say, Israel, cut it out, but then also keep giving Israel weapons, to the average person with the Badrig Bad David brain, they see that, especially when it's a company with how old Brandon is, and they go, oh, Trump was strong. He was posturing. He was at least like his words and his actions were actually consistent. Like he's racist. Uh, he's, he has a white nativist immigration policy. He has a, a, a white nationalist uh, foreign policy. Doesn't give a fuck about the victims of America's wars or whatever. Yada, yada, yada. But at least there was a consistency there. And the American military reacted in the way that he claimed they would. With Joe Biden, all you see and all you hear from him now is pulling out of Afghanistan, which is a continuation of Trump's foreign policy for the record. Okay. But then everybody pens that as a massive failure, as a massive flub. Okay. They talk about how like Biden gave uh, Afghanistan up to the Taliban and how unacceptable that is, even though it's literally a direct continuation of Trump's negotiations. They yell at him about his lack of decisive action on Israel, or at least they make it seem as though he's uh, wagging the finger at Israel as it maintains his ethnic cleansing campaign. But it's not actually wagging the finger. It's publicly saying it's wagging the finger. And all that remains is the notion upon the population that Joe Biden is actually unable to control Israel, its own attack dog. Steve Shives, he blocked us on. I don't know who that is. He did a funny video on the Israel-Hamas war. I think Hassan would get a kick out of. What are you guys talking about? Are you guys having conversations with one another? Huh? In the chat? How much will that uh, war cost me? No, <laughs> I'm not going to do that. Um, so maybe that's the one thing. And that's kind of something to be good on his behalf, although I'm not a big fan. Uh, I have a problem with other policies. But, uh, yeah, I don't think, yeah, maybe that's the only thing. That but, 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 Basim, what about... Bro, that's crazy. Donald Trump assassinated Qasem Soleimani. The only reason why it didn't turn into an all-out war was not restraint on the American side. It was a restraint on the Iranian side. That's crazy. Let me but, stay on this. Go, 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 go. I was going to ask a question, too. Because, okay, I, uh, 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 on, the, on the spending side, it's going to cost COVID, us money. I guess. <laughs> He's a business. <laughs> that's an interesting perspective. Yeah. But, okay, how about, how about this one? How about the fact that... You know, he says, hey, you have a button, I have a bigger button. Mm. Hey, you do this, I know exactly where you are right now and I can destroy you. I would much rather not. How about the fact that he put the fear in people that wanted to bully and take advantage of other people so nobody did during his time? Maybe, but you also have to remember that COVID came in right in the middle. That was three years later. That was three No, years. that was actually... The, two and a half and, years later. Yeah, but, but you know... The first two and a half, or still, if the COVID came, you know, that's even a bigger opportunity. I, but I have no clear answer. I couldn't, I'm the only, the only thing is like, oh, this is going to cost us money. It's so funny. These fucking idiots have no idea what Donald Trump's North Korea policy actually was, and they are simply hyper-focusing on the things that people tweeted. And the things that like MSNBC covered. The real reason why he was de-escalatory in North Korea was actually because he was giving in to the demands and taking a back seat to the conversation between South Korea and North Korea. Something that literally Rachel Maddow yelled about. Trump's actual perspective on DPRK policy was de-escalating military operations in the region and even fucking visiting Kim Jong-un. No, he didn't make us look weak. No, Trump did a good job ironically with north korea is like one of the few parts of his uh foreign policy that wasn't that bad i'm not even joking his twitter fingers are ridiculous nonsensical overall he took a back step uh he, i mean he took a back seat to the south korean north korean relations for the first time in like american history i mean he might have done it for bad reasons because he's like he fancies uh you know autocrats or whatever but still he did that he um decreased the amount of military operations being conducted in the sea and um, that was a, a decent enough assurance for North Korea that 
Now North Korea is popping off. They literally, they're literally tearing down monuments his father had erected, symbolizing peace between North Korea and South Korea. But yeah, because South Korean, I mean, now South Korea is infinitely more reactionary towards North Korea. I can't speak on North Korea. I don't know what their fucking internal politics looks like right now. I haven't been paying attention. Um, as far as um, as far as North Korea goes, like Trump actually did a decent job with that. South Korea now is, of course, way more reactionary than it was before, but there is. Money, I don't want to spend money. But, 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 you, but you know what, though? You're a smart guy and a reasonable guy. Because for me, like, if I, if I were to sit there and say, you know, uh, uh, what did Clinton do? You know, I voted for Clinton. The freaking last time we had a balanced budget, him and Newt Gingrich worked together, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, what did Reagan do? Reagan and Tip O'Neill would go have beer together afterwards as two Irish men that would fight throughout the day, but at 6 o'clock they're at the bar sitting there having a drink together, right? You don't have to like the enemy. What? This is why this is a relatively popular podcast, bro. Because it's so stupid. It's just like, bro, he's just a liberal? Yeah, he's like, I mean, there's a tremendous amount of valuetainment that I'm getting out of this. And it's because he's such like an everyday common guy. Like his perspective is so like normal American median voter. It hurts my brain. Me, or somebody that may be policy-wise you disagree with. You may say, I don't agree with them on pro-life, pro-choice. I don't agree with them on blah, blah, blah. I don't agree with them on this. But holy moly, the temperature was super low during Trump than we have today. Everybody uh, that was talking about Biden's a sweet man, he's a unifier, he's this, he's that. Dude, we got like, it's almost a World War Three categorically. We can't say it, but there's a world going on right now. Because he's supporting Israel. But so did Trump, though. Yeah, but Israel didn't do that act during Trump. And you know what uh, Trump said about Netanyahu? Mm. Did you hear what Trump said about Netanyahu? Right. Can you pull up a clip about what Trump said about Netanyahu where Trump said, after what happened with Ghassan Soleimani, okay, you remember when he took out Ghassan Soleimani, who was supposed to be like the next leader, he was the number two guy in Iran. Um, he criticized Netanyahu and said he almost didn't trust him because when Netanyahu said he was going to be in it with him, he didn't. Mm. So, so the part about Trump is he doesn't have a problem critic. Wait, you criticized Netanyahu? Your daughter's married to Kushner. What are you doing criticizing? I don't Net know if that would be the same if it was like more of a massive. Uh, Wait, what? So he just said his his son-in-law is Jewish. That is literally like the same shit that 4chan Groypers say. What the fuck? <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, that's so sick. Dude, I love these guys' brains. I'm having so much fun with this podcast. <laughs> he just straight up said, dude, your son-in-law is Jewish. How can you criticize how can you criticize Netanyahu? Like military operation that's Maybe happening. Because right it now. wouldn't happen on because, because like when you kill someone, yeah. a kind of like repercussion kind of like die very quickly. But this is like an ongoing for more than three months. So I don't know if what how would Trump would they react. Are you a sports guy? It's funny because it's like I'm so valuetained. I've never been more valuetained in my entire life. The idea that one, Trump is like um, following through on Israel's interests because his son in law is Jewish is the funniest argument. Okay. Like it, it's just, it's funnier than like what other anti Semites say because there's like an element of like, there's an element of anger I experience when I look at like the fucking dumbass list where they're like, Look at all these Jews in positions of power. And it's like half of them aren't even fucking Jewish. <laughs> They're suspected Jews. The notion that it's like not even something like that, but specifically because he really likes his son-in-law. <laughs> yeah, man. That's why they did the Abraham Accords, because he really likes his son-in-law. It's cool. I like I like hearing new talking points. I like hearing new uh, new talking points like that. Um <laughs> I'm I'm not a value tainer myself, but I think PBD was saying that because Kushner worked directly with Netanyahu for the Abraham Accords, but Trump obviously didn't give a shit. Yeah, but then he would say that uh, separately. Yeah. What do you yeah. like? What sport? Basketball. You like the basketball? The entire reason why Jared Kushner did the Abraham Accords is because that's his son-in-law. But overall, the goal for the Abraham Accords, which Joe Biden is literally following through on, was to completely sidestep the sidestep the interests of uh, of of. Uh, Palestinians basketball. Yeah, you know what they say. You know, it's like uh, 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 sometimes, like these teams, like you know, Baltimore Ravens, or some of the teams, like even back in the days. I don't know if you're a Detroit Pistons guy or if you're an old school basketball guy or not. A lot of the guys won because their defense was sick. 
Yeah. Right? They just had a sick defense. Or you wouldn't come through the middle, or they just were freaking hovering all over. It was so annoying. Yeah, like, I, the, the, like the Jordan rules and Pistons. Dude, even I know the Baltimore Ravens is not a basketball team and is actually a football team. Why did he say that? That's right. The yeah. Jordan rules Pistons, right? So, you know, sometimes, you know, the, the best way to prevent a war is to have the fear you impose on everybody else where you, you know, defense where it's like, you know what? Did this is this podcast better than JRE? No, I do think Joe Rogan fell off. I kind of love Patrick Bet David now. Cause like in in all of the weird shit that he says, there's still like a very jank style, like genuine framework. Like when I look at Tim Pool, I recognize immediately like this guy, he has a very different perspective. What you see is what you get with Patrick Bet David. Like he has a level of sincerity that Jank also has, even though I have my disagreements with Jank. I have my disagreements with Patrick Bet David, but he has a level of sincerity. Joe Rogan, on the other hand, I feel like does not have that sincerity, and neither does Tim Pool. I think Joe Rogan used to have it, but lost that sincerity, actually, with like all the COVID mania. We're just not even gonna get there. I don't even want to do anything under this guy. Do you think at this point, like for example, case studies, you've been here since 2014, right? November 11, 2014. So do you think 10 years? You've been here 10 years. I came here November 28, 1990. Okay. And you come here like, okay, uh, a senior, Bush senior. All right. You know, Clinton. Huh. Interesting. Okay. Boom. Junior. GW. Interesting. Okay. Obama. Huh. There's a Trump. Huh. So now you got so many case studies, and then in life, you sit there and you say, socially, these are the issues that matter to me the most, right? You know, if you and I were to start a country together, if you and I started a country together and we got 10 million people, okay, and we have an opportunity to attract another 10 million people to our country, what do you think the mothers and the fathers' number one priority is to come to a new country? Do you think it's social security? No. Bro, I have no idea what this guy is saying. He's awesome. He started off with like the best, the best offense is actually a really solid defense. Like that's what he said, right? Which, so I thought he was going to be like, and that's why Trump is a goaded president. And he's just yapping away on like 11 different tangents. Now he's talking about immigration. You think it's Medicare? No. Do you think it, what do you think is number one? I would say the S word right? Security and safety. Let's just say, okay. A woman wants to feel safe around a man. A woman wants to feel. Oh my God. Now he's doing some PUA shit. Yo, that's awesome. He's sick. Secure around a man, right? If the number one word. Bro, I think he's checked out. I've never seen this man more checked out. Is the S word, especially the last three years. Do you think a lot of people in the last three years are sitting there reprioritizing their top reason to elect the president as somebody that's going to lower the temperature to not have war? Do you think America's kind of there today after all the... Yo, he took a fucking, like, I'm not even kidding. He took, like, a 19-minute tangent to say, like, the best defense is a strong offense, but he distorted that. He, he said it in the wrong direction. He then talked about how important security is for immigrants, and that's why a lot of people come to America, only to literally say... Trump made the world more secure and America more secure by being an attack dog. Just like a lion would be. That's awesome. This man is not the mayor. He's not the governor. He is not the, the, uh, the Senate uh, leader, Senate minority leader, Senate majority whip. This man is the king. Not the president, the king of yapping town. He has been the greatest yapper that I have seen on this broadcast in quite a while. Okay? He is the monarch of yapping. Of Yapsville. Okay? Population Patrick. More like yap trick. Boom. More like yap trick, I said. Am I right? <laughs> now that is valuetainment, okay?
mess we've seen the last three years? I still have hope in America. I still, I still like, like this country this month. I consider this as my own country. I find it like I found a second chance when I left the Middle East. I think America is, is actually a great country. It has a lot of potential and it has given a lot of... Bro, okay, dude, I get it. Like, uh, you know, time is a flat circle. I'm literally Bassam Yusuf, but in the future, he is me. Okay, we get it. Like, you don't have to literally directly say all of the same things I say all the fucking time. Okay, we got it. it it's me in the future. I'm watching myself. I'm going to be that jacked, and my hairline is going to be that intact in the future as well. We got it. Put people, including me, a second chance. So I, I believe in the idea of America. And the fact that I criticize America, I criticize it like, well, like we do. We criticize it out of love in order totally, to be better. Of course. And um, what I'm worried about is like over the years, America might have lost that kind of lure because it has been dragged more and more by my military industry complex. And the money... No, I plan on becoming more libbed up. As I get more jacked as an older man, I'm become I'm gonna be way more lived up. Has been prioritized in order to spend money on war, spend money on the military. I agree. And I think it's I mean sixty eight percent of your budget is taken to the military, and that's not a lot of that's that's huge. And many of these military contracts has been um, exaggerated. And sixty minutes just shows some like something that used to cost thirty dollars now cost three thousand dollars, and there's no catch. There's 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 no curb of these prices because they are the one who are making up that's the prices. Right. So, yes, the security is great and all, but security in itself, because North Korea has security, right? It's not about the security. This is education, and there is, and there, and, uh, and... Now that you've seen the video, definitely don't rapid fire the N-word on the pod in the future. Sure, fair. I wouldn't do that, you're right. I'm not that libbed up. The equality and people... Let me answer this, hang on one second. Chris Kumo. Mr. Cuomo, we're on a podcast. Why are you calling us? Man? We're in the middle of a podcast. Name, name dropping. Yeah, I mean. Chris. What are you talking about? I'm doing a live podcast. Okay, I'm done. I'm done. We can't. I can't do the rest of this. This is too much. It's too much. That's insane. Okay, we did that. We we lived through that. I, I watched that for like three hours, I think. Obviously, there was uh, certainly a lot of um, sidestepping. There was a little bit of drama, Philip DeFranco coverage. I've decided, however, I'm definitely going on the Patrick, Patrick Bed David podcast. 100%.